we shall now commence with the first session for this evening our distinguished speaker for this session is dr indronil basure dr indronil basure he is a mbbs gold medalist md dm cardiology now presently he is serving as consultant cardiologist electrophysiologist he is presently working as staff cardiologist and interventional just at memphis va medical center the university of memphis usa he is also associated with m rishikesh as adjunct professor of cardiology and head of integrative cardiology dr basure's other association includes instructor in medical cardiology harvard medical school physician scientist at texas heart institute in addition to this he has been a practicing he has been practicing meditation since his childhood and has been initiated in the kriya yoga tradition by swami hari harananda ji giri maharaj his daily course includes medication practice of advaita vedanta and to serve human as cardiologist today dr basu resal share his expertise on mechanism of yoga from bedside to genomic and the session will be moderated by professor dr shomiran mondol sir professor dr shomiran mondol he is the head of department yogi art and science professor department of Physi uh, physical education at vishwa bharati university shantiniketan professor mondol pursued md in physical education from university of kalyani from the same university he completed phd in physical education thereafter he pursued post doctoral research from department of physiology miyazaki medical college japan he has a teaching experience of more than 22 years with 81 international and national journals and books professor mandal is also the member of unesco traditional and recreational games research team with research experience of more than 27 years guiding phd and post doctoral students now may i request dr indronil sir to start your speech please indronil sure. sir uh it says screen sharing is disabled you have to allow screen sharing then only i can share my view dr shuman you are requested to kindly you, allow screen sharing allowed. of dr yeah, i got it please. i got it now i got it okay can you guys all see my screen can you guys all see it yes sir okay. can you guys hear me clearly hello yes sir you are not okay um sorry good morning uh, everybody here in the us good evening in uh, in, in india uh, it's a pleasure to be here um, uh, with you guys and uh, what i'm going to talk today is the, uh, uh, can we have other people on silence please or mute okay Can you please mute other people because uh, we can hear voices coming here. So um, today we are going to talk about the mechanistic model of yoga. So there has been a lot of research in the last two decades that tells us how possibly yoga works, and still there's lots to be found out. Actually, what I tell people, what I tell my students is, if you work enough, uh, maybe in the next ten years, um, somebody who can find out really the exact mechanism by which yoga works. which itself will give a nobel prize i mean there's been more than 2 to 3 nobel prizes on different concepts that 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 constitute yoga so uh, let's start today uh, and uh, we will uh, i'll be more than happy to answer any questions that comes so yoga is an ancient indian technique of healthy living we all know that it is there's extensive research in the last few decades that has revealed the critical role that yoga can play in eradicating stress Numerous studies have corroborated yoga's beneficial effect, including favorable influence on autonomic function and negative emotions. This has laid to the foundation for a scientific understanding of the pathophysiological changes that happens due to stress, and as to how um, yoga can prevent it at the molecular or at the genetic level. 
I'll pass on a, a recent article of mine which talks about this so that uh, to Dr. Ghosh, he can distribute it to everybody. Um, my talk is basically based on that, uh, uh, how yoga can be, what is the mechanistic model of using yoga? Now, uh, a couple of things. So today when we discuss, I'll be discussing on uh, the brain and the autonomic nervous system. What are the changes we have in the brain? The psychological mechanisms, the endocrinal mechanisms, the cellular mechanisms, and last but not the least, the genetic and the epigenetic mechanisms. So, uh, so let's go to understand what are the changes in the brain. So in the last one to two decades, the good news is that because of the existence of functional MRI, CT scan, um, uh, using radioactive ligands, we can actually target uh, to understand neuronal activity. We can find out what the neurotransmitter concentration is, how the blood flow is, what are the physiological correlates on people who are meditating. Roger Watts' lab in uh, University of Wisconsin has uh, uh, use functional MRI and CT scan on thousands of brains, uh, including Dalai Lama, a lot of Hindu uh, monks and Buddhist monks who have practiced meditation for 20, 30 years and has given us a understanding as to what happens when uh, somebody meditates. So there's been certain findings that is very revolutionary. We never even thought in 2000 years of modern medicine that that could possibly be. So the first and foremost is practice of yoga has been correlated with greater cortical thickness. So your brain actually grows. As you know, for the last 2000 years, the idea was the brain doesn't grow. Maybe there's a few cell here and there that grows. But now this is a mechanism by which you can actually make your brain grow. Um, and uh, not only the initial paper which came out from Harvard, but after that there were over uh, 89 papers from all over the world. Uh, which shows different parts of the brain can grow. And simultaneously, there are parts of the brain that not only stops growing, that becomes smaller and smaller. How? So suppose we talk about the frontal lobe, cerebral cortex, the temporal cortex, those areas grow. So you have a better memory. You guys must have heard the story of Swami Vivekananda reading a book. Uh, he was given a book when he was in London by one of the famous authors, and he went through the book in five minutes. He went through all the, he flipped through all the pages. So the author got insulted and he said, I'm giving you the book to see how it is to, so that you can really take a good look and give me opinion. And you just flip through the pages as if uh, your time is being wasted. So Swami Vivekananda said, no, I read every page. So if you have any problem, if you don't believe me, you ask me any question. So that, when the person asked questions, he Vivekananda could answer everything that was there in that 500 pages. So from where does this powerful memory come? It's because uh, meditation increases your memory. Meditation causes your cortex to grow. If you practice meditation for 10 years, your cortex will grow by one, one inch. And you have to understand there are thousands of people who have uh, dementia all over the world. There's hardly any medicine. There are three medicines that really doesn't help uh, in dementia. If you can really prove to be having a good medicine, you'll possibly get the next Nobel Prize. Uh, a couple of days back, they tried to come out with a new medicine, but there was a lot of problem with it. I don't know if you guys watch the news, but you don't have, you don't need any medicine. Uh, you practice meditation sitting at home without paying anything and uh, without going to a doctor, you will have a normal memory till the end of your life. Secondly, it makes, it changes the brain chemistry. Not only changes the brain chemistry, it changes how the neuronal group fires. And uh, the firing of the neurons, as you know, uh, depend uh, whether you're happy, whether you're sad, depends on what group of neuron is firing. If the group of neuron, the serotonergic neuron continues to fire, you will be happy. And that's why many antidepressant dr drugs in allopathic medicine are serotonin inhibitors because it increases serotonin in your brain. And uh, whereas uh, uh, if you have a lot of dopamine in your brain, you will be sad because dopamine uh, uh, causes depression. So, but remember in Indian philosophy in yoga, we don't even talk about happiness. We talk about something else. What do we talk about? We talk about bliss or ananda, bliss, which is a thousand times more than happiness. 
So how does bliss happen? We now know that when you change the brain chemistry by practice of meditation, you almost <clears throat> predominantly start producing serotonin. And there's one more thing that is produced, and that is called endorphins. I don't know how much of you have heard the story of endorphins. Endorphins were discovered by uh, Israeli scientists in 1970s. They found that a very small amount of drug could cause severe happiness. And that particular medicine was being released deep inside the brain. So it was a small peptide. So those Israeli scientists, they're not Indians, don't forget that. They're not Indians, they're not Hindus, they're not from India, they've never been to India. But they have understood the word <coughs> Ananda, which has spread for world over, that it is bliss. So they said this compound can cause bliss. So let's name it Ananda Amide. Amide means, as you know, a protein molecule. So it's Ananda Amide. So Ananda Amide are endorphins released deep inside the brain. <clears throat> And they have, now we know after 30 years, they have a lot of different functions. They increase your immunity. There are multiple other functions. So the brain completely changes yourself as you practice meditation, not only to depress uh, dopamine release, but increase serotonin release, increase norepine release, um, increase bonding between the two uh, lobes of the brain, what we call the corpus callosum. It's like you have two small roads going from uh, one small road and with a lot of obstruction near Dalkola going from Calcutta to Darjeeling. And you replace that one road with six lanes that was originally planned. What will happen? You will have thousands of cars going at the same time. So most of our brain is like a small uh, village road that connects the left and the right side of the brain. So we are not as powerful we can, as we can be. If you replace that with meditation, then you have a six lane connecting your brain. So your brains become super powerful. That's what I call the super, the Buddha's brain or the super powerful brain. But along with this <clears throat> brain, meditation does another very, very funny thing. What is that? There are areas in the base of the brain which we share with our reptile friends, with uh, alligator, uh, with snakes. Uh, the dinosaurs had huge brain, uh, huge um, those type of brains, which has predominantly hypothalamus, amygdala. So these are the basal brain places which deals with negative emotion. And what with practice of meditation, you see this negative emotion slowly goes off. There are people in whom uh, Buddhist and Hindu monks who have been who have practiced meditation for 20, 21 years, 25 years, 15 years, you can hardly find any function of their amygdala. Their amygdala becomes small. Now, there was a study in the 80s where they took uh, young kids uh, born and brought up in Hungary who uh, had their parents who died uh, when they were young. So they were placed in foster homes. And uh, in foster homes, they grew up. Uh, they had a lot of abuse in the foster homes. So when before they were taught meditation, their brain was scanned and they, they had a large amygdala. But as they learned meditation in four weeks, they found the function and the size of amygdala started decreasing. So now we know meditation does two things. Not only it increases the good part of your brain, it also decreases that negative part of your brain, which is more interested with, um, associated with neg negative emotion. So I, whenever I get somebody who's anxious, who's depressed, I tell them, I, I need four weeks to you to practice meditation. You can change your brain completely. <clears throat> and that in modern term is called neuroplasticity. This is a little more deep concept. I, I guess uh, most of the people are physicians here. So um, that's why I'm, I'm presenting this. This is uh, more for... Uh, physicians and PhDs than for non-physicians and common people. So as you know, normal brain like um, has got a lot of abnormal waves called beta waves. So beta waves is very active, very fast waves. So if you put electrodes in a normal people brain, you'll find a bunch of beta waves. So when you have this beta waves, you think the brain is hyperactive. Actually not, brain is sleeping. 
So brain is a paradoxical organ. When it has beta waves, it looks as if it's very active, but actually it is sleeping. If you want activity, if you go into meditation, there's decrease into an activity called the alpha activity. The whole brain starts producing alpha activity. Now, for example, I'm talking with you. If I'm talking with you, I need a couple of areas. I need to see where I'm talking. I'm talking to the computer and because of the computer, you guys can see it. Because I'm talking to the computer, the eyes are not seeing. Eyes are taking the um, rays and sending it to area 18, 19 uh, in my posterior lobe. So the area 19, 18, 19 is seeing what I'm seeing. But area 18, 19 has got no clue what, what am I seeing? Why, why am I seeing this? What am I seeing? Why am I seeing? Um, it has no clue. The reason it has no clue because take a brand new computer and open up a Microsoft document. What happens? It will not open. It will ask you what app should I use to open this? So you have to click uh, a right click and say Microsoft Word. And you have to put in Microsoft Word inside your computer only, then the software will open it. Same with the brain. Brain does not know what is this computer. Brain does not know who I'm talking to. Why at all am I talking to myself sitting early in the morning here in America? I don't see anybody else here. So this information is passed by area 41, 42 in my temporal lobe, just above my ears. So it tells you what the environment is, who I'm speaking to. What is the level of my uh, people who are listening to me? What should be the level of my speech? Should I talk like I'm talking to uh, class eight or kindergarten students? Or should I, am I talk, I'm talking to doctors? So I have this area 41, 42 uh, activated. I have area 18, 19 activated. So if, we, if I put in micro electrode inside my brain, I'll find there's alpha activity in area 41, 42, 18, 19. But rest of my brain will have those crazy beta waves. If you remember, one of the talks Saul Vivekan had once said that it is like a pond. If the pond has got clear water, you can see the bottom of the pond. You can see every fish in that pond. It's so clear. Now a kid is sitting on the side of the pond and going on throwing in stones, which maybe you and I might, might have done when we were uh, young children. And when we throw stones into the pond, despite the fact that the water is completely clear, you can't see the bottom because there are ripples all over. There's ripples in the water. So our brain is full of ripples. Your brain and my brain is full of ripples. But once we start having a yogic brain through meditation, those ripples goes away and the entire brain becomes completely clear. The entire brain becomes active, rather super active. And that's how you develop the super active brain or what we call the Buddha's brain. Now, there are a couple of other concepts that's coming in. I don't want to go a lot of details because uh, um, some of them are, are almost borders on getting Nobel Prizes. So one is consciousness. The question, of course, how are we conscious? So when um, people understand or people go into Samadhi, there is the, 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 it's said in the literature that you understand the mechanism of the whole universe. Now, how do you understand the whole mechanism of the whole universe? When um, um, Vivekananda was questioning his guru over and over again, so all that Ramakrishna did, because Ramakrishna had gone to Samadhi for over 20 years before he met Vivekananda, he just touched Vivekananda and Vivekananda understood, uh, felt like a billion volt passing through him. And he understood. So what basically could have happened is that you change the brain frequency. And there are monks who can go as low as gamma frequency or delta frequency or theta frequency. And gamma frequency is the frequency that is found in uh, babies inside the mother's womb. So, and there is some indication, there are some pa pa papers in Nature and other uh, top journals that uh, the basic human cognitive function is based on the gamma frequency. So imagine this, the people who actually reach Samadhi, they may have got the capability of quietening their brain to that extent to create gamma waves, which is not found in normal humans at all. That's why they started understanding the mechanism of the entire universe, how it works. So that's an important thing to understand. Um, let me go to the next now, how does the brain make your brain grow? How does meditation make your brain grow? 
sorry, it's early morning for me, so I'm I'm trying to have my, uh, uh, my morning tea. We are having a large amount. We are having a conference going on, um, as you know, in in the US, uh, which over uh, 50 sessions, um, 100 speakers. This is the last week, so unfortunately, I'm busy. But I could not refuse my friend Subhamoy Go, so I had to come. After I finish this, I have uh, more. I have another big conference. I have another webinar. So, um, uh, and in this webinar, we have some of the world, some of the topmost people coming and speaking. So it's if, and it's completely free. So uh, you can I, I can send all the links. Feel free to go and watch. Go to YouTube. All the past videos you can see. People who have treated uh, breast cancer and other cancer for 25 years with yoga. Uh, from MD Anderson World's number one cancer hospital, people in Harvard who have treated uh, with yoga, all their speeches, all their webinars are there. So feel free to listen to them. Now we have to understand how does brain do it? Brain does. Brain has acute, a very uh, uh, important mechanism the brain uses. Number one, it causes what we are now understand is something called the mTOR signaling. So mTOR signaling is a signaling that starts an entire cascade of genes uh, that causes a creation of a bunch of neurons. So for example, let me say, that, as I said, suppose I'm a guy who's already anxious and depressed. So if you do, um, if you go inside my brain and do a functional MRI or a, with a dopamine uh, oxygen, um, radioactive oxygen label dopamine, you will see my brain is filled with dopamine. When I practice uh, meditation for four to six weeks, the mTOR signaling gets activated. So what happens is automatically mTOR causes through another A called serotonin that uh, activates another bunch of genes and neurons to increase what is known as BDNF. So when the serotonin gets, gets signaling pathway also gets activated, these two pathways together causes release of BDNF brain-derived neurotropic factor. That causes massive replication of neurons. That's why I say in four weeks from a depressed, anxious person, you could be a happy, uh, loving person. Why? Because this BDNF creates new circuit. Because it creates new circuit and all the activities of the brain is pulled to create this new circuit with serotonin transmi as a transmitter, Obviously, the dopamine cells don't get to work. So dopamine dies of its own and you get this brand new brain with new circuits. So it is like having the small road, as I said, from, from uh, uh, Calcutta to Darjeeling with brakes everywhere uh, where, you, where the traffic is extremely slow um, or going from uh, airport. Uh, now it's got better after you have those, um, uh, after you have those flyovers. But uh, when I was a kid, I think when Shubhama was a kid also, every day you, you had to leave uh, Belekhada or Salt Lake two hours before uh, if you had to go to the airport, which is only 15 minutes as the helicopter flies because you get stuck in traffic. So same thing happens here. Here, um, the normal brain is like that small lanes where the neuronal transmitter goes very slowly. But when you have BDNF uh, and a whole bunch of new neurons are created, new pathways are created, uh, you have potentially a super active brain. Now, after understanding the brain, let's understand a little bit of the autonomic nervous system. So the core thing that we need to understand is that autonomic nervous system is closely related to us as human beings on earth. Let's understand how. When you get up today, uh, today morning, uh, you knew you had this um, program today and you are preparing for it. Um, or you may have got up in the morning, talked to your father, mother, wife, husband, uh, taking care of your kids. But that's not what humans did for 2 million years. We are on earth. When they got up in the morning, they could have found that uh, large anaconda trying to get into their cave or a saber to the tiger waiting in front of their cave, ready to kill them. So they have two options. They either fight or kill it or they run away. Obviously, whatever they did was right. That's why you and I are the dominant species on earth. Otherwise, somebody else would have come we wouldn't have the dominant species. So unfortunately, our basic reaction is still like that. We have fight or flight response. 
Say, for example, I have a friend who is same as me, who I think is less intelligent than me. And then I find that he is prospering more than me. So I am jealous of him, which is a common human reaction. So if I was a dinosaur, I could have gone and eaten him up. But I'm a human being. I can't eat him up. So what am I doing? And I cannot do anything to him, but I can initiate those flight and fight reaction to me because of my jealousy. If I don't like something, again, the fight or flight response coming. So you might be thinking, why should you, uh, uh, the, why should the fight or flight response come for such small things? That is because that's how the human anatomy physiology is created. For everything, that's a basic response. And that is the basic response that has made human being the dominant species on earth. If we did not have flight and fight response for over 4 million years, remember, we are settled into a society for maybe 2,000 or 5, Mohenjadaro is supposed to be 5,000 years. So even if I take, uh, we are in a society for even 10,000 years, 10,000 years is nothing compared to the millions of years that we existed on earth and other animals before we became human beings. So we would never have had this if we didn't have the flight or fight response, we have perished. But the problem is this fight and fight response causes massive damage. It causes heart disease, causing severe heart attacks, causing people to have end-stage heart disease. It can cause severe arrhythmias, which kills Every two minutes in America, somebody is dying. And uh, because of what is known as sudden cardiac death, it is caused by, uh, in India, as you see, nowadays, 30, 35 percent uh, age people are having severe heart attacks. And they have to undergo bypass surgery. Where are these coming from? These are all unleashed by psychological stress. So when you're getting psychological stress, which may be something very simple, you might have just a, a tiff off with your wife or with your husband, or you might scold your son because he did something that is wrong. And not, none of this is abnormal. This is a normal living, normal life. Every one of us has done it. And every one of us do it on a regular basis. Or even more silly things that your neighbor got a brand new car and you cannot, you've been trying uh, to buy a car and you cannot afford it. Things even as stupid as that. But your body doesn't understand that. Your body understands only uh, these responses. So your body creates the fight or flight response and causes changes in your brain to release a bunch of uh, neurotransmitters, which causes release of a bunch of sympathetic uh, uh, in your body, like adrenaline, noradrenaline. And these causes what is called the inflammatory uh, release inside the body. They release inflammatory cytokines like uh, you know, IL-6, TNF-alpha, uh, all the cytokines are released and this cytokines causes inflammation in the body. So when these cytokines get released inside the body, like interleukin-6, interleukin-12, they cause inflammation. And when inflammation is inside the heart, you get heart attack. When inflammation is inside the brain, you get stroke. When inflammation is inside the kidneys, you get kidney disease. So Allopathic medicine has been busy with treating the disease, like how you treat heart attack putting a stent. But stent does not treat heart attack. Trend just treats the, the vessel that is closed down. The vessel that is closing, um, that closing vessel is opened down. So if your roof is breaking down, you got to change your roof. You take a bamboo stick and put it on the part which is breaking down, that don't last long. So putting in a stent or doing a bypass is doing like a bamboo stick to keep your arteries open. What do we need to do is we need to go behind that. And scientifically to go behind that is what you do with yoga. You change the inflammatory parameters. You change how brain reacts. You stop being jealous or you stop reacting to being when you have a problem, you have a fight, you have any quarrel. When you stop having doing that, you stop having inflammation in your brain to cause stroke, in your heart to cause heart attack or high blood pressure or poorly controlled diabetes. So they, even before you get high blood pressure, 20 years before that, the problem happens in your brain and we are not aware of it. Only when our blood pressure grows up, 
we go to a doctor the doctor sees a blood pressure say oh it's oh you have blood pressure now uh, i diagnosed you with blood pressure so you right diagnosed with blood pressure no you, this is what you diagnosed as a doctor using a machine which does not have the capability to see the origin the origin possibly happened 20 years back when the guy was uh, 10 years old or even 5 years old now we know you have um, large arteries can have um, fat accumulation when you are just 5, 10 years old and some of the biggest disease that activates that sns causes sympathetic stimulation causes atrial fibrillation world's largest um, arrhythmias over 20 million suffer all over the world india has many more because in india has one extra cause for for uh, having this problem and that is the rheumatic heart disease which the west don't have west they have only age related atrial fibrillation uh, and that to america has maybe 3 to 4 million of them and in the next 50 uh the next 20 years we have we are uh, that the number will go over to over 20 million in america itself now think about india india has aging population also but other than that india you have 20 30 40 years old people with mitral regurgitation mitral stenosis having severe atrial fibrillation so india has three or four times the number with atrial fibrillation <clears throat> and again i talked about sudden cardiac death so when you have sympathetic stimulation all this happens so what does yoga do yoga suppresses the sympathetic and yoga activates the parasympathetic so when you activate the parasympathetic one of the very powerful way of activating parasympathetic is doing the pranayama or the breathing technique the problem in us and a lot of other countries and unfortunately in india also nowadays a lot of people tell me i go and do yoga So what do yoga do? Do you do? Oh, I do these asanas, and they name me five asanas. It is important to understand that asanas or physical postures are just two per two to three percent of yoga. If asanas was that important, the most important book about yoga, the Patanjali Yoga Sutra, which has one ninety six sutras, some people say one ninety five, that would have had predominantly asanas. it has only three sutras that talks about physical asanas so what does that mean that means that 95% of yoga is breathing dhyana dharana dhyana pratihara and meditation so just doing physical exercise like yoga doesn't give you it does benefit you but it benefit is just 2 to 5% if you have to activate your parasympathetic you have to go to meditation you have to practice the breathing techniques because as i'll show you in a bunch of research all over the world how this has happened so yoga what yoga does is yoga tries to shut off the sympathetic discharges that we have had as a human being or more so as an animal now as a human being we really need it. and most of the time we don't even need it but we create it because that is the only way that human being as a machine can respond and that's what our spiritual people say that you have to go from human being to godliness what is godliness is not a super being standing in the sky it's you yourself who has got complete control over yourself so this complete control comes when you can throw away the the sympathetic activity and replace that with parasympathetic activity as i'll show you parasympathetic activity there'll be oxygen consumption will change your heart rate will get slower you'll find uh, heart rate variability change and there's a bunch of other measures which i don't want to go so we i try to give you a basic understanding i i took little more time so that i'm not sure of uh, all the participants what is their level of understanding so i tried to be little more a um, uh, little more explanatory um, uh, um, so um, dr ghosh is that okay or uh, you think i need to go a little more fast no no uh, it's okay it's okay thank you now let's understand the psychological effect so psychology plays a very important role whatever your brain says that's what you are if you are a happy animal because your brain makes you happy if you are a sad animal because your brain makes you sad and that's what uh, buddha said buddha has got a famous saying pain is mandatory if you are born on earth you will have pain ramkrishna had throat cancer jesus was killed by putting uh, 
yeah, in his um, in all his body, in uh, putting nails all over his body. There are tons of saints who are burnt alive. So if you are born on earth, you will have pain. But suffering is optional. So pain is mandatory, but suffering is optional. You will so whether you will suffer pain or not depends on how your brain behaves. So whether you will go through anxiety, depression, despair, or anger. Because each of this damages your heart, damages your kidney, damages your brain, decreases aging. I'm sorry, increases aging, and you die faster. But what yoga does is yoga creates a positive attitude by changing your brain cells, by completely reorienting them through neuroplasticity. Not only does it change the brain, it also changes the physical manifestations of your brain, like releasing interleukin six. Take for example COVID. Why do people get more ready to COVID? Because they already have interleukin-6 in their blood. And then when COVID acts, you have 80, 90 times more interleukin-6. Millions of people have died all over the world uh, because of COVID. How many uh, were killed by the COVID virus? Any idea? Not even one person was killed by the COVID virus directly. Yes, I repeat that statement. Not even one single person was killed by COVID directly. They get killed because COVID causes immune reaction called, called the cytokine cascade, the cytokine storm inside the body, which releases massive amount of interleukin-6, and that causes complete damage to the lungs, damage to our brain, damage to heart. We have seen, because we've been treating COVID for over one and a half to two years now, that there are patients, even with mild COVID, no COVID, uh, when they die, we take out the heart to see if they have any COVID virus. There's no COVID virus in the heart, but the heart is severely damaged. So who damaged the heart? The heart was damaged by the body itself because interleukin-6 was released because of depression. You're, uh, you're staying as, uh, yourself at home or in some family. Fathers have died, mothers have died, brothers have died. All this creates a uh, problem. Plus, um, uh, the whole situation of lockdown causes uh, a lot of emotional problems. But the body, brain, unfortunately, reacts in one particular way by releasing more and more of inflammatory uh, transmitters, inflammatory molecules. Do those inflammatory molecules kill the virus? Absolutely. But the bad news is it kills you too. So the question is, how do you control this? We now know that you can actually control this, and I'll show you in a couple of slides how we do that. And there is medical proof by Western people to show how yoga can actually bring them. So Hatha Yoga, which is the posture which 99% of us process, uh, does help. It helps to recover from stress, autonomic balance, homeostasis. The, it brings down the HPA axis, and I'll talk a little bit about the HPA axis in the next few slides. But it is magnified. Pure, pure Hatha Yoga means only postures doesn't help that much. You have to incorporate the other parts of it, which is breathing techniques, mindfulness, which is dharana, uh, dhyana, which is meditation. We'll go into that. Now, let's see the endocrine effect. So it's very important to understand the endocrine effect. And I know there's a lot of pathologists out here. So um, uh, it's uh, important to understand. Uh, so. What happens is when you have chronic stress, now there are a couple of types of stress. Suppose you have an example about, I, I, I guess there are uh, medical students here or fellows here who have to give their MD or uh, BHMS. So you have stress. Is that bad? No, that's good. Because that stress will increase your brain power, will increase your memory, will cause more protein. So whatever you study will be stored in your brain. But that's not the stress which we are talking about. We are talking about toxic stress. What is that? So toxic stress means when the stress activator or the trigger has gone, but you're still stressed. That's called you toxic or the toxic stress. Now the toxic stress is the stress that kills all of us. Not most of us, all of us. Why? Because most of the heart disease, the largest killer on the earth is heart disease. It kills twice the number due to cancer. Almost all of them is caused by stress. Whether it's, in, it, it, it's a devil with different faces, whether it is heart disease and heart attack, whether it is a brain disease, 
uh, and stroke, whether it is a limb disease and you call peripheral uh, artery disease. The names are different, but as you can understand, being most of you being physicians or they, they all are actually disease of the vascular system. They are neither the disease of the heart, nor disease of the brain, nor disease of your peripheral blood vessels. They are disease of your blood vessels. So if the blood vessel is unfortunately in your heart, then you have a heart attack. If it's in your brain, you have a stroke. So these names are misleading. So basically what you have to understand is that these pathologies happens all over the body. So the next time you are angry because somebody, your co colleague got a promotion and uh, you did not get, don't get angry because what you must remember, the moment you got angry, a million molecule of interleukin-6 comes out in your blood and it damages you. The great colleague of yours who's got promotion, nothing happens to him because you're not a dinosaur. You can't go and eat him up. You can't damage him. You can't change his career. Yeah, you can certainly get better. And that is a stress that is good stress. But if you continue to keep that stress, this is just an example I'm giving. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that you guys are do this. I'm just trying to give an example how human beings behave. So that's where spirituality comes in. In spirituality, you are compassionate. You don't be judgmental. You don't think, oh, why did he get this? Why did I did this? Why do I have an ambassador car and why does he have a Mercedes? That doesn't matter. It, if it can take you from one place to other place, whether it is Mercedes or ambassador, it doesn't matter. You have to do your job. And being judgmental creates all this problem. So what happens in chronic stress? What happens in chronic stress is brain releases a couple of components. One is a CRP. That is, the as you know, brain causes corticosteroids is released by the cortical glands, in the, the adenocortical glands, but it is released inside the hypothalamus before because ACTH is released from the pituitary. Even before that, you have the CRP that is released, cortical releasing hormone is released from the hypothalamus. So brain releases that. So tons of corticosteroids come to your body. So when tons of corticosteroids come to your body, what happens? What does corticosteroid do? Does it increase your immunity? No, it decreases your immunity. So in the COVID pandemic, when you're stressed that, oh, I have to, I'll get COVID. Oh, my mother has died because of COVID. Oh, tomorrow I'll get COVID. Oh, what happens to my son if he gets COVID? What this does is this doesn't make you more healthy. It makes you more sick because you are making sure that your body is flooded with glucocorticoids. The next time the Delta variant enters you, you can almost guarantee, as you know, Delta variant is five times more infective and five times more dangerous than the Alpha variant of COVID-19. So it, you can guarantee you'll get infection. So this axis has to be stopped. And that is what um, yoga does. Yoga tries to shut off the hypothalamus pituitary axis, uh, HPA axis, which being doctors, most of you possibly know. But how does inflammatory cascade work? They work through a pathway called kappa beta pathway, NF kappa beta pathway, uh, which is the inflammatory pathway. They haven't got Nobel Prize, but they possibly will get Nobel Prize in the coming upcoming years. This is the root cause of all the evils on earth. All the deadliness, all the inflammation, all the heart attacks, all the stroke is because this inflammatory pathway, and I'll talk about something else also called CTRA, which is over 330 genes. This gene activation causes severe inflammation all over the body. So imagine you, you imagine how stupid human beings are, and that's why uh, all the big gurus tell us um, that you have to be spiritual, you have to be compassionate, you have to be non-judgmental, you have to live in the present. Is because even things as silly as that, oh, my neighbor has got a better, bigger house and I have a small house. That is unfortunately translated inside your body by releasing a bunch of adrenaline and noradrenaline, which instead activates the NF kappa beta pathway causes a release a bunch of glucocorticoids, brings down your immunity. You are more liable to get viral infection. Number number two, you are more liable to get heart attack if you already are overweight, diabetic, hypertension because you are releasing until you can six in your blood. So imagine something as silly as saw, which you don't even think. Even we as physicians don't think that such a small thing could cause such a vast reaction. But that's actually what happens thanks to research in modern medicine. So this is a more, uh, I'll send you the, uh, once I send you the PDF, please circulate it, I think, uh, to all the participants. There's over 100 participants, as I see now. 
So you will get all this. Uh, they have all the latest research. So feel free to use them, read them. Uh, so you have a better understanding. But I think as physicians, you, and one thing good is, I guess they're, um, uh, Dr. Ghosh, are they, is it true that these are uh, homeopathic physicians or no? Mostly homeopathic or are they other? Uh, a mixed, a mixed one. Uh, few okay. from uh, fundamental research also and a uh, few from modern medicines and from homeopathy. Okay. So the good news is this, that uh, at least in homeopathy and other pathies, and now more and more allopathic people are also understanding that people have understood. So in allopathic medicine, the problem was you started with the body, then we went down to a heart, and then we went down to a muscle. And so we had a cardiologist. Then I have, you have people like me, interventional cardiologist, interventional cardiac electrophysiologist who deals with electricity. Then you have interventional cardiologists who are like plumbers. They open up your blood vessels. And then we wanted to go to myocardial specialists who just deal with one myocardial. Then we suddenly realized that in the last 2000 years that while trying to go smaller and smaller, we went to heart, we went to um, uh, myocardium, we went to liver, then we went to hepatocyte, that we lost the human totally. And now we are coming back and now we are trying to understand the whole human. The God, good, good news is, is the, uh, that understanding is coming into allopathy very, very fast, at least in the West. I do not know about India. I've been outside India for a long time. Uh, but the good news is most of the other pathies still consider that uh, to be the root, certainly uh, Ayurveda and uh, yoga. And I think uh, whatever little I know about homeopathy also has this sort of an understanding um, that physical symptoms come from much deeper uh, aspects rather than uh, you know, from that particular organ only. So which is good. But this is some science that when you explain to your patients or other people, uh, this is hardcore science. So these are the signs that has got people Nobel Prizes that you can tell actually that what you're saying is no more a theory. It's an actual science and these are the proofs. So I'll send you the PDF, feel free to use it. So it's important to understand the dangerous immunological changes that you bring about when you start becoming judgmental. When you start the circa, the vicious cycle of sympathetic nervous system. Yoga practice causes improvement in salivary cortisol, CD3, CD4 cell count. CD3, CD4, I know, you know, are helper cells. They increase your immunity. They increase immunoglobulin A. Three, four weeks of yoga practice will improve your immunoglobulin A. What is immunoglobulin A? That is the one which lines your lungs, prevents the Delta variant to get into your lungs, kills it at the door. That's part of what we call the innate immunity. There are two immunity, innate and adaptive immunity. So innate immunity, it kills it. Whereas if you have four to six weeks of depression, your immunoglobulin A level falls down. And this has been seen in actual clinical study. So if you want to prevent COVID, don't go and waste your time doing a lot of nonsense. Start practicing today. 10 to 15 minutes of meditation in four weeks, you'll make sure that you don't get COVID. Because you have to increase your immunity from inside. No medicine is known to mankind. If you can find out a medicine, people claim there are medicine which increases immunity. But nothing has been proved. If you have proved it, you'll get a Nobel Prize. But why do you want to try to get a medicine when your body has the medicine itself? When God has given the medicine directly into yourself? All that you need is sit at your home and practice. You don't have to go to a doctor. You don't have to go to any pharmacist. You don't have to do Nobel Prize worth of research. Everything is done. All that you have to do is sit and practice for 10 minutes, for five days, five out of seven days a week. That's all you need. And this is something even a, a 10, 15-year-old kid can do. A 95-year-old person can sit and do in a chair or even in, in his or her bed, who can be your mother or elderly in your family. So there's nothing preventing you. So that's why I tell people in my talks already that you have what is called a Tesla. Tesla is the car which can self-drive. Now you can make the self Tesla self-drive if you read the manual. It's easy. It's a couple of steps and uh, it'll drive by its own. It'll stop when there's a car in the front. If a car from the side comes, comes it'll stop because it has got, it's got 16 cameras. It sees all around and it actually drives it. It sees the red light, it'll stop. It sees the green light, it'll start going again. Now the same car you drive like you're driving an ambassador. You can do that, nobody's stopping you. 
So who is stupid? Are you stupid or is the car stupid? Same is it. Who is stupid? Is God stupid or are you stupid? God has given you this power or nature. I don't believe in God, nature, whatever you want to call it. I'm a scientist. You, you may be the same. I don't, uh, I'm just using the word God to mean basically nature. Uh, and God means any God. It could be Hindu, Muslim, Christian. I don't care uh, as a scientist. But nature has given the power inside you. And you can do that in two and a half seconds. You just have to know it. So why, and if you still want to drive yourself like a broken ambassador, despite being a uh, alter, and listen, Tesla was developed within 100 years of we having an automobile. Less than around 100 years back, Ford discovered uh, automobile. It's, it's just around 100 years now. And this machine has been here for millions of years. So you can imagine if human beings with all our limited codes can revive a self-driven car in four, in 100 years, how powerful you, the car that God has or nature has created after 4 million years, how powerful you can be. So when people come and tell me, oh, I'm so weak, what can I do? This pandemic is killing me. Don't say that. The moment you say that, you are starting the cycle, the vicious cycle of sympathetic drive inside you. And the moment your sympathetic drive is started, you start the vicious cycle of having more dopamine in your brain, more depression, more sympathetic release, more sympathetic release, more interleukin-6 release. And when there's more interleukin-6 release, you get COVID by chance because your immunity comes down and then you die out of COVID because remember, interleukin-6 is a direct marker of COVID. So when you have 100 times 100 or 84, um, huge amount of interleukin in your blood, you get moderate disease to severe disease. And with the Delta variant, which is so toxic, um, it kills your lung in five to seven days. I mean, um, I was uh, be, being a cardiologist, being a cardiac electrophysiologist, I never uh, treated any um, mild uh, to moderate uh, COVID because they didn't come to me. They came to the pulmonologist. I only treated the severe COVID because they have severe heart problems. So they got admitted with arrhythmias in the, in the CCU. So, uh, so what kills is the high level of interleukin-6. So if you, inflammatory markers interleukin-6, so you had, can prevent yourself both by releasing, preventing the release of interleukin-6, number one, number two, preventing the sympathetic drive, number two, and the, the core of it is increasing your innate immunity by increasing immunoglobulins. Now, what are the inflammatory markers that yoga practice can downregulate? The good news is I've given here the names because as physicians, you should know the names, but you don't have to know the names because everything, everything, yoga is a miracle. The rishis, I could, don't call them rishis, I call them scientists because people who have reached um, samadhi, they are actually scientists. They have understood the mechanism of the universe. What Buddha 3,000 years, 5,000 years back has told us how brain works. We have big names today, but the basic mechanism is exactly what he said, sitting inside a people tree 5,000 years back. Because when you really, as I said, when you reach Samadhi, we can see that in somebody practicing 15, 20 years of meditation, we can see the massive changes in the brain. Imagine a person who has reached Samadhi. So that's why Werner Heisenberger, you guys may have heard the name, he's one of the fathers of modern quantum physics. He famously said once that what we are inventing today are not invention, they are discoveries, for they have been invented by Hindu rishis long back. So when you reach Samadhi, you can actually understand what is happening not only in the universe, but inside your body. So what yoga does is it downregulates everything. Interleukin-6, interleukin-1, alpha B, TNF alpha. And just four to six weeks of practice of meditation in cancer patients. You know, as you know, a lot of diseases cause interleukin not only COVID. Cancer causes interleukin-6 rise. Um, heart attack causes interleukin-6 rise. It's an inflammatory marker. So what they took is they took patients with cancer um, who had high level of interleukin-6 and they taught them uh, yoga for... Um, six to eight weeks uh, and then they did uh, they, they divided into two groups one group had all the modern uh, chemotherapy and everything the other group also had all the modern chemotherapy and everything but on top of that they uh, were taught meditation to do yoga 
After uh, three months, they found the interleukin-6 level is very high despite all the modern medicine treatment in the non-yoga controls, whereas in yoga control, it was uh, decreased. Then what they did is they increased the yoga from six weeks to eight weeks to 12 weeks, and they found even lesser amount of interleukin-6. So it's like a drug. It's dose-dependent. More you practice, more you take, get the benefit. Now let's come to the genetic effect. Um, so as one of the genetic effect that I described in general is it decreases methylation of BDNF. So BDNF, as I said, is the brain derived growth factor, which causes a generation of new neurons. It feeds the neurons. So it's like, if I keep you jailed and I don't give you food, you're going to starve. You're going to live for 10, 15 days and maybe die. Same thing happens to the brain of you and me because we are always in stress. We don't have time to, uh, uh, create more BDNF. We have, and that's why everybody after 25 to 30 years of age, you don't, uh, whatever brain you have, that's all that you have. It's like a bank. Whatever money is there, that's all you have. And after your money finishes in the um, in your uh, in your bank, you can go and kick the ATM machine as much you like. Uh, kicking the ATM machine won't give you more money because you have no money in the bank. So by the age you're 30, all the neurons you want you have in your brain. And after that, you go on using them. And every day, almost three to 400 neurons die. That's so by the time you're 90 years of age, your brain becomes like a monkey's brain, so small. Every 10 years, if we do um, um, CT scan of your brain, you'll see you have a big brain now. By the time you're 60, your brain is almost half. By the time you're 90, on the CT scan, your brain will look like a monkey's brain with uh, full of uh, salt size, hardly any guy eyes. That's because um, with uh, your, that's how you get uh, dementia. And in Western countries, almost 35% of the population about 30, above 85 years of age are in uh, nursing homes uh, or in uh, elderly care center. They don't even know their own name, leave alone who their son is, who their daughter is, who their wife is, where their house is. They have no clue. They don't know where they are. So because of this. But now we know that uh, Sarah Laser showed in her landmark paper in 2005 that uh, just 10 years of uh, meditation can increase your brain by one inch, which is a huge increase in brain. So one of the mechanism, it prevents methylation of BDNF. So the BDNF remains active for a longer period in your brain. Because it remains active for a longer period, you can cause more neuroplasticity and neurogenesis. Also, it causes significant reduction in methylation of glucoid receptor gene, so uh, which re reduces cortisol. As I told you, cortisol is both friendly and deadly too. Friendly because when you need to run from a, uh, anaconda, that is what saves your life. Tomorrow you have a heart attack, that is what it saves your life. But it, it, is, it itself becomes the cause of a heart attack if you continue to have stress for a long time. That is the problem with it. So these are like a two-edged sword, one side, it's good when it's coming for a short time, helping you through the crisis, then should go off. But in 90% of us, it stays because of abnormal uh, uh, stress that we have in our lives, and it creates more problems than being helpful. And obviously it causes global modification of a bunch of histones. As you know, uh, histones, uh, the topic for another day we can discuss, a little too complicated to bring in now, but there are different chemicals that can go and lodge into the DNA and make changes in the DNA. So yoga and meditators have, have had the power to make changes in their DNA uh, by causing a modification of the um, de deacylate genes, uh, deacylation of their genes and um, bring out uh, changes that A, can increase lifespan, B, decrease aging, C, decrease all the inflammatory modulators that we talked about by silencing those genes, by causing shift in what is known as the master genes. Um, this is uh, telomere length in yoga. This is uh, Elizabeth Blackburn. Uh, she got Nobel Prize in 2009 for uh, discovering telomerase. As you know, longer the telomerase, the longer you live. Um, there's been a lot of studies which show telomerase uh, uh, remains long or gets longer when you practice meditation. There's some controversy on that. Most short-term study did not show much um, difference, but long-term study did. This is one um, pilot study. Um, and you may see this. These studies are, are, are people who are not Indians. They're uh, uh, in other countries. They have no understanding of Hindu philosophy or Hindu as a religion or practice of yoga. 
uh, as part of Hinduism. That's why I go and tell people yoga is a scientific thing. It has nothing to do with any particular religion. It does have things to do with spirituality, but it has nothing to do with any particular religion as such. So you can be of any religion and take advantage of yoga. So in this PLOS One paper, you can clearly see they have shown people with hypertension when they do lifestyle modification and practice meditation and yoga, uh, there's massive reduction in uh, their uh, telomerase activity. So the telomeres increase and that causes uh, them to have lesser living. So this actually has got a massive change in the very concepts um, of modern medicine. With modern medicine now, we have developed a concept called chronological aging and biological aging because of this. So what is chronological aging? So suppose you are born 50 years back, so your age is 50. If you are born 70 years back, your chronological age is 70. Nobody can decrease that. But if you have practiced meditation for 10 years, though you are 50 years old now, your age may be 30. What do you mean by that? It means you are biologically a machine. After all, you are just a machine. You are just an animal that biological machine is as young as a 30 year old guy or you may be 90 years old but your biological machine may be as young as a 60 year old so that is called biological aging so chronologically you're 90 years old but biologically you're 60 years and we see that in the himalayas all the time we see 90 year old guy moving up and down um, um, uh, climbing uh, up the mountain faster than people who are 50 years old so that is very important to understand that this is the core understanding in medicine that has changed after 2000 years that yoga decreases aging. Longer you practice meditation, longer you might get younger and younger. That's why people who are so-called old, 70, 80, 90 years old, they look much younger than they are. And they live long, like quite a few. My guru lived till 96. I mean, um, uh, and he had gone to Samadhi multiple times. Um, unlike a lot of modern gurus who are very vocal nowadays, they come in TV, come in other things. My, I belong to an extremely powerful line of gurus who don't come out in the open because uh, um, spirituality and practice is meant to improve people's life. It's not meant to come in the TV and make a big noise about it and uh, do a lot of branding and marketing. There's nothing to market because every human being has to learn this. Every human being will learn this and every human being has the same faith. Uh, as you learn this, you take advantage of it. So that's the way life is all about. Finally, I'll talk uh, of CTRA. So CTRA is around 330 genes, maybe more, uh, which is upregulated in things like what is happening now, that is the pandemic. So when you have pandemic or when maybe you lose a job or when you somebody close to your family dies, you have this set of genes. This is called, um, it's a big name, CTRA, as you can see the name, I've put that here and you'll see that in my paper also. This gets activated whenever you feel sad, depressed, and the body thinks it is in danger. And remember, body gets fooled. Even when you are jealous that the next door neighbor has a bigger house, body reacts in the same way. Other than that, body also reacts in the same way when you really are in danger, when you get cancer, when you have degenerative diseases like bone pain, um, knee pain, joint pain as you get older. When you have cardiovascular disease, when you have psychiatric illness, those are the real places where CTRA is uh, activated. And when CTRA is activated, a bunch of things happen. All the inflammatory markers I talked about you, they are activated. There's down regulation of antiviral activity. So you are more likely to get a COVID or any dangerous virus. Leave it on COVID, even a mild virus, you'll get it because your protection is like opening the gates and then expecting nobody's coming in. That's not going to happen. If you keep your gates open at night, thief will come in. Today, they may not know. Tomorrow, they'll know that, uh, that your gates are always open. They'll try to come in and rob you. So that's, the, uh, that's what exactly happens. And now we know that we can possibly change the, um, uh, some of these characteristics like activation of CTRA um, using uh, yoga. So I'll stop there now. Uh, I think there's a lot of questions and I'm more than happy to answer the questions that has been put in the chat. If there's any other questions, uh, um, I'm happy to answer that. Uh, yeah. Uh, sir, may I have request the moderator to please say a few words? And thereafter, we will be taking that question answer session. Okay, uh, thank you. Would you listen to me? 
It's okay. Yes, sir. You are able to. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Indranil Basurai, is uh, the chairman of American Association of Yoga and Meditation, and is a pioneer in scientific platform uh, with making a scientific platform all over the world. So Dr. Indranil, would you kindly uh, stop your? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop your. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fine. That's okay. Okay. So. Um, Dr. Basurai is a pioneer in scientific, uh, making a scientific platform all over the world. Thank you, Dr. Basurai, for making this platform all over the world. We are very happy and see you in this uh, USA and working for our uh, yoga, ancient way, ancient way of life, ancient way of life practicing. And it's a scientific, uh, scientific knowledge you are sharing with us. Really wonderful. So I'm, I'm talking about uh, um, um, as, a, as a moderator. Uh, uh, what you have uh, given us, that is the brain structural changes after the joke. It's a beautiful areas of structural changes you have seen in your slides. And then after the uh, chemical changes, the many types of chemical changes inside the brains, uh, particularly the brain chemicals uh, changes, which is good brain chemicals. Also the brain waves, uh, changes of brain waves. There are a lot of papers, but your, your lecture is giving us more, much more detail about this brain waves and the, and the, uh, and the, the changes uh, up to the beta, theta, delta, gamma levels. Also the super activity of brain uh, due to meditation practice, you are giving us that type of example. And mTOR signaling, this is a new type of you know, the information we, have got, we got from your lecture, sir. It's a very beautiful mTOR signals. And, also, you are giving us the uh, ANS PNS activities and the detail of is ANS PNS activities due to the due to you know the yoga, regular job practices. Uh, the positive changes uh, in the brains uh, that is the uh, neuroplasticity. It is also uh, there are a lot of research about this neuroplasticity, and uh, for that uh, uh, just a bit for that. Uh, the, the, the new brain cell is there, and for that, the human brain is developing much more due to, uh, due to this, you know, the uh, regular job practice. After that, you have uh, given us the uh, um, literature and the scientific materials about the endocrine, uh, endocrine effects, especially the HP axis effect and the other effects. And immunological changes. There are many new ideas and many new, uh, many new, you know, the knowledge, uh, knowledge sharing. You are giving us the many new information, the scientific information about uh, CD3, CD4, uh, IgA, I, um, interleukin 6, uh, interleukin 1, and different type of information. Very good information and excellent inf information, sir. And inflammatory markers. Also, there is a, a beautiful, you know, the information about these inflammatory markers. We don't have that type of information before that. And also the genetical effect. This is a, another new type of, you know, the information you are giving us, sir. This is a, a genetical uh, factor also been changes after yogi practices. Uh, neurogenesis, especially the neurogenesis and the BDNA factors. The DNA changes also you are giving us. The uh, last one is the telomere length uh, and uh, long life of uh, long life, uh, you know, the effect of long life and telomere uh, changes uh, with, with the practice of yoga. This is another one, uh, good information and new type of information. And also the CTRA. Sir, we are encouraged very much this kind of scientific knowledge and give us the confidence and give us the strength. Excellent lecture, excellent lecture. We can encourage as a leader of this uh, scientific world in yogic sciences. Uh, we are encouraged a lot, and also uh, the the DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital Principal uh, Samon Kumar, Professor Samon Kumar Mukherjee, and uh, Dr. Suhamoy goes. They are arranging this kind of uh, you know, seminar. This uh, is a very good one, excellent one. Uh, this type of information, we, from this in information, from this type of lectures, we got uh, you know the uh, we got the you know the scientific knowledge. We got the, you know, the, our, our profession will be developed, job profession will be developed, and similarly, the other profession, integrated profession will be developed with this scientific knowledge. So thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Again, we, are, we want to listen to you in next seminar, next lecture, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, we would like to take some uh, questions. Uh, Dr. Basu, oh, sir, uh, will you be answering some questions uh, in the chat? Yeah, yeah. Answer box. 
yeah i can i can answer questions so but before that uh, let me say this uh, thank you dr mondol for your kind words but um aym is looking for people who are interested to do research in this field and you can do it from india only uh, yeah. we can provide you with help and we can get top papers posted in top journals uh, so i am looking i would um, i will share my emails right. and my phone numbers feel free to get back to me anybody wanting to re do research want to publish papers on these topics uh, we can absolutely we are going to do that so you can contact with dr ghosh or dr mondol there and um, yeah. i am looking forward to have young people from india taking interest especially those who are doctors uh, taking interest in this so that we can take the field forward but thank you dr mondol for your kind words and thank you dr ghosh for having me here thank you sir yeah do you want me to read uh, dr sangeet or do you want to read me the question Uh, sir, uh, you can just pick up an answer uh, okay. as you say, sir, or should I read it for you? Uh, why don't you read it for me? That will be a little better. Uh, I I think okay, I can sir. do. It. Yeah, I can read it now. Yeah, yeah. So this is the one, right? Just correct me if I'm wrong. Meditation is the seventh stage of Stanga Yoga. But what yes, is some of the most important question? Yes, sir. There's uh, a question uh, by Dr. Biplab Burman. Uh, he is asking: yeah. med Meditation is the seventh stage of Ashanga Yoga. and beneficial for swastik person but what is your suggestion for tamasic type of people yeah though that doesn't matter whether swastik or tamasic tamasic will become swastik too that's why you have to practice yoga so that uh, doesn't ma matter so uh, what stage uh, it doesn't matter you start from zero stage uh and second is do you have any study on another methods which is not any treatment but effects is on no there is nothing that does not a uh, meditation there's nothing called traditional and non traditional everything is uh, traditional everything is non traditional and all of them actually help uh, so do you have any and suggestion for bengali for yoga bengali physician? yoga physician i don't have i think uh, these are all yoga physicians uh, dr uh, samiran mandal uh, is uh, if i remember correctly he did from s vyasa he is a professor at uh, uh, shanti niketan Uh, yes, Dr. Ghosh himself practices uh, Kriya Yoga as well. I know. I, I know him for thirty years. I think he's practicing for twenty years. Uh, so these are the people. I mean, though I think he. I'm not sure if he actually teaches uh, yoga, but uh, yes, these yes, are yes, people yes. who are knowledge. Okay. Yeah, Dr. Yes, Mondo does. Yes. So these are the physicians yes. that you have to go. There are tons of. Uh, there is no dearth of physician. There is a dearth of initiative on the people's part. If they have initiative, there's an old saying in Hinduism that if you want something and if you want it enough, it will come to you. So there are very very good uh, yoga teachers. There's uh, Dr. Abhijit Ghosh. There's Dr. Subhanand Mandal. Uh, uh, Subhamoy Ghosh. There's a bunch of people. Uh, Subhamoy and uh, Subhamoy. and babu can show you a bunch of other people who can teach so i don't think there's any dearth of people in bengal no no okay, uh, himself is uh, a very good uh, yoga practitioner also i <laughs> okay sir okay, there is a good. question there is a next question from devopriya ghosh madam uh, she is asking how does yoga regulated glucocorticoid receptor synthesis and uh, uh, translocation to membrane could you please yes. elucidate yeah so that is uh, that will take a one long session because uh, it involves a lot of uh, the process but as i said i'm going to share the a with you guys now with uh, dr ghosh and dr mundal and then once i share with them uh, they will send it to everybody so that this answer to the question is given i have given the uh, given the papers which explain this and that's itself a 5 or 10 page paper and uh, so you can she can go through that and uh, if she still has some question i can answer it but it is uh, too big to be answered as a an answer here in this particular session okay sir and uh, there is another question by her also uh, uh, regarding how does silencing of htacs at a global level help in stress response yeah uh, what is hdacs so really i i'm so not aware of the topic so uh, you have the, to i think tell the full form because 
non non well known um, uh, yeah, appre- appre- abbreviations like this may mean different to different people i don't know what hdac is what he or she means by that but uh, oh histone disease yeah that is yeah, yeah histone uh, okay, okay sir again it is there in that um, i have uh, how it silences we, we all have that um, i've given that paper uh, it's uh, i mean there are actually over maybe i don't know maybe 14 or 15 papers on that so um you can read those uh, and then it will explain how it does it although it is theory we don't still don't know if uh, mr ghosh or anybody can prove any one of them they'll get a nobel prize but uh, we have some understanding how it does it and uh, my, my my paper has the my paper has the uh, has the link yeah devupriya is a molecular biologist she is pursuing phd okay. PhD in uh, NCBS. That's why. So she should she should work with us. She should then work yeah, with yeah, us. Yeah. And if she's really interested in these things, then she should work with us, and we can explain to her, and she can do part of her research on this. This will take her to the world level because uh, there are a few million people doing PhDs who go go into oblivion, and uh, for uh, after their PhDs. But if she does in some of these topics, uh, that will uh, help mankind also. Okay, so there is last question by uh, Dr. Piyali. She is asking the def- uh, difference between uh, meditation and clear voice. So there is no similarity at all. Meditation is a process by you quieten the brain. Clear voice is the capacity to see the future. Most people, when you reach a level of quietness of your brain, or when you reach samadhi, you automatically have clear voice because the whole universe reveals itself. That's why Vivekananda could predict uh, Cuban famine almost hundred years after. if you read a book by paramahansa yogananda called the autobiography of a yogi there's a very interesting story so um, one of paramahansa yogananda's favorite student um, uh, uh, paramahansa yogananda went to india and when he came back on a christmas christmas night he gave that uh, his favorite yeah, who's an who's an american uh, a silver cup as a gift so when he gave that gift to that man that man started crying and paramahansa yogananda just looked at him and um, then then the man told his real, his real story the real story was this is there in the book autobiography of a yogi you should read it almost 50 years back 50 years back not one two days not two weeks not 10 years 20 years 50 years back when he was just 11 years old he used to live in chicago so he saw a guy for the first time in america who was wearing orange and he had a huge turban in his head which he has never seen in america walking in the streets uh, and uh, so he followed him and that man entered the uh, one of the world at that time one of the america's largest uh, hall in chicago and when he was entering he saw on the top that they were having the world's one of the world's largest uh, conference of religion later on he understood that that man is called swami vivekananda so after his first day lecture in swami vivekananda as you guys know its history people stood up for almost 10 15 minutes and there was continuous clapping for 10 15 minutes continuous by the whole hall and there was clapping even after that after vivekananda speech so next day uh, vivekananda was supposed to give another speech so he tried to go near swami vivekananda near the stage and when he was almost 20 25 feet from vivekananda vivekananda actually called him so he went near to vivekananda vivekananda read his mind and didn't he didn't he, he didn't he was just 11 year old kid he was a small kid he didn't have the guts to even speak to vivekananda vivekananda was tall elegant looking and uh, he was obviously a superhero by then because he was thousands of people was all around him so but he he vivekananda called him then he 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 mustered the courage to go near vivekananda and vivekananda told him i know why you are coming to me but i'm not going to be your guru your guru is going to come and he is going to give you a cup a silver cup on the christmas night so after that uh, obviously vivekananda went back and then 5 years 10 years 15 years 20 years 25 years passed he's a old man of 70 years now so he thought well what vivekananda he he completely forgot the incident he thought that uh, initially he thought maybe so vivekananda said was just uh, philosophical is not uh, any truth in that 50 years back he remembered the incident 
Vivekananda had left Earth, took Samadhi almost 30 years back. So he predicted something that was going to happen 50 years later. So that's called clairvoyance. That has nothing to do with meditation. Meditation gives you multiple powers. And that's what uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutra talks about. And one of the small powers is clairvoyance. So there is no relation between them as such. No, thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir, on behalf of TND Homeopathic Medical College, we would like to express our sincere gratitude for sparing your valuable time, explaining such complex functioning of brain explicitly and in such simple language, and also correlating the effect of yoga on this complex functioning for getting a better life. Hope to get your suggestion and input for various research activities, sir. Thank you again. Thanks a lot to the moderator, Professor Shomiran Mondol, sir, for your valuable input on this session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Indronil, for your nice deliberation. Thank you, thank you. Really, sir. Proceeding to next session on integration of yoga uh, in homeopathy, opportunities and challenges. Our respective speaker for this session is Professor Dr. Shubhamai Ghosh. Professor Ghosh presently is working as the head of the Department Pathology and Microbiology at this institute, that is DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital. With teaching experience of more than 20 years, he has been guiding postgraduate students under West Bengal University of Health Sciences. He is the investigator of ongoing research projects under Department of Science and Technology, Government of West Bengal. He is the former member of Drug Proving Committee under Central Council for Research in Homeopathy. Sir has published more than 40 research papers in various prestigious peer-reviewed index journals all over the world. Professor Ghosh is also the mentor reviewer of Publon and member editorial board of different prestigious journals. And to moderate this session, we are really privileged to have with us today a pioneer in the field of pathology, research and a true lover of homeopathy, Professor Dr. Shatadol Das sir. Professor Das sir obtained MD microbiology from Calcutta University securing first position. And in 1980, he was awarded with the J.N. Chaudhary Gold Medal Award. Our institute, that is DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, is blessed to have had him as the head department of microbiology and pathology. Presently, some of his attachment includes he is the principal investigator virology laboratory at Dr. Lee, uh, Dr. Anjali Chatterjee Regional Research Institute, Kolkata, under Central Council for Research in Homeopathy Government of India. He is the consultant microbiologist at Peerless Hospital and BK Royal Research Center. He is the visiting faculty at West Bengal University of Technology. And last but not the least, he is the guest faculty at the Department of Pathology, DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital. Professor Das sir has presented numerous papers in national and international conferences, workshops, symposia guided many PhD students under West Bengal University of Health Sciences, Calcutta University, and other various universities, with more than 176 publications in various research and international index journals. And he was awarded with the Best Research Paper Award by Central Council for Research in Homeopathy, Ministry of Ayush, Government of India, in 2018. We welcome you, sir. May I now request Professor Dr. Shubhomai Ghosh to please begin his session. So Thank may you, I sir. audible to you now? May yes, I... sir, you're audible. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. audible, sir. I like to share my screen, okay? Yes, sir. Dr. Shuman, will you please allow him to share his screen? Uh, it is... <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Shuman. Shuman, sir, you may please yeah, yeah, proceed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir.
at the very onset, I like to convey my deep regards to all the panelists, uh, especially my moderator, who is the master of the master, guru of the guru, Professor Dr. Shatudal Dash. Uh, you know, uh, very well, the saga of yoga is about 5,000 years. And, uh, you know, the Patanjali, the sage Patanjali rightly defined the yoga in second aphorism, yogas chitta vritti niradha, which is a very important, the cessation of mind is a very, mind stuff is a very important in yoga concept. And yoga, specifically, uh, it covers the whole, that is the mind-body medicine, mind-body aspect. It covers the whole. And, you know, uh, the concept is the integration of yoga in homeopathy and its opportunity as challenges. That is the very important issues. At the very onset, if we think that uh, SWAT model, that is the, what is the strength, what is the weakness, and what is the opportunity, what is the threat? You know, uh, strength is the very important. Yoga is well tested since 5,000 years. If we quote it a very single line, what, are the, what is the weakness? Yes, we, we like to show the evidence, we like to show the research, more and more research, which is less in yoga. And what are the opportunities? Yes, yoga can cover all the levels of health care, that is primary, secondary, and tertiary level. And yes, all levels of prevention, that is primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention, and tertiary prevention. Yes, these are the opportunities. And what is the threat? Mainly, single line I can share you, it, many times it is tagged with a religious taboo. Yoga is not meant for any religion. It covers the holistic approach. It covers the mental aspect. It, it covers the spiritual dimension, not only the uh, mind body, it covers the spiritual dimension. Yes, sometimes anybody ask about the spirituality. What is the barometer of the spirituality? Very interesting question. And answer is very uh, rightly uh, told by Shami Ranganathan. Very interestingly, he, he told, are you growing spiritually? What does it mean? Can you love others? Can you feel oneness with others? Have you peace within yourself? And do you radiate around you? That is called your spiritual growth, which is stimulated by med meditation inwardly and by work done in the spirit of service outwardly. So, uh, you know, uh, we are talking about uh, the uh, uh, research and we are talking about the clinical trial. How does it work? That is very important in our IU system, including yoga. Already uh, Dr. Indroni Basurai already described the mechanistic approach of yoga and meditation also. You know, uh, there are few biomolecules which is released during meditation and yoga. So very important molecules, which is anandamide, the anandamide molecules, which is called bliss molecule. It provides the bliss after meditation. And the dopamine, which is already described by Dr. Basu, the reward molecule. So this molecule is generated during meditation. Oxytocin molecule, that is the bonding molecule. Endorphin, that is the pain killing molecule. During meditation, this molecule is generated. And the GABA, the anti-anxiety molecule, it is generated. And serotonin, that is the confidence molecule. The meditation sometimes provides the confidence. And adrenaline, that is the energy molecules. So these molecules are generated during uh, uh, meditation and yoga. 
And rightly, Hanuman said that uh, uh, we are we are not uh, uh, born. Uh, uh, there's a physical existence. We are we are born for the higher purpose of existence. That is the same philosophy of Joe. That is that is we are talk about. So integration of yoga in the setup of, setup of clinical practice is a very fundamental one. Because you, you know the yoga is well tested and homeopathy is well tested for like last 200 years. But everyone seeks evidence. So two types of evidence are important. One is fundamental study, one is clinical trials. The highest hierarchy, that is the gold, golden farm rule. So a high start key is the systematic review and meta-analysis. So difficulties are there, challenges there, and opportunities are there. So we have to integrate in a CAP model. That is the knowledge, we have to acquire knowledge, we have to acquire attitude, and same time we have to practice that in the fashion of CAP model. Yes, we have tried a little bit the integrative of homeopathy yoga in dyslipidemia. It's a very, very small and fundamental uh, clinical trial we have conducted in a clinical setup in my previous work station, that is Mahesh Bhattacharya Homeopathy Medical College. So uh, integrative homeopathy and yoga in dyslipidemia is an open randomized and a pragmatic trial. And what is the background? I, I like to uh, share is a very uh, uh, short time. What is the background of the study? You know, dyslipidemia is a potent risk factor for cardiovascular disease and complication. And yoga therapy and individualized homeopathy medicines have long been recognized for their value in treating dyslipidemia. But the evidences have remained mostly anecdotal. So no study has ever explored their integrative role in, the, in dyslipidemia. So this pilot trial was aimed at examining the feasibility issues for a definite and larger in future trial, competitive with the effects of individualized homeopathy only, yoga therapy only, and integrated individualized homeopathy and yoga therapy in dyslipidemia. What are, what are the methods we have adopted? We conducted an open level randomized three parallel arms, pragmatic, pilot trial on 60 participants is a small uh, sample size suffering from dyslipidemia at Mahesh Bhattacharya Homeopathy Medical College and Hospital in West Bengal. Participants were randomized in one is to one is to one ratio to receive either individualized homeopathy that is 20 in number and yoga therapy is 20 in number and individualized and yoga therapy is 20 in number. In all together is 60. So ITT that is intention to treat sample was analyzed to detect difference in lipid profiles, that is triglycerides, total cholesterol, HDLLC, LDLLC, VLDLLC. So, so among three groups over three months of intervention by one way analysis of variance, that is ANOVA. Yes, there is a result. It's a very sh short way I would like to share you. The recruitment retention attrition rates were 62.5 and retention was 96.7, and the attrition is 3.3% respectively. And groups are comparable at baseline. Over three months of intervention, there were statistically significant intra-group reduction in TC in all three groups, and TG in individualized homeopathy, and individualized homeopathy and yoga groups in LDLC in only, and IH YT group and VLDL group in individualized homeopathy. And IH and into <coughs> a yoga therapy group is high density lipoprotein, was not imposed anyway. So these group receiving individualized homeopathy and yoga showed, but a non-significantly, that is p-value less than 0.05, better trend to improvement compared to individualized homeopathy and yoga therapy only. So what is our conclusion? Conclusion is a small but non-significant direction to the effect of favoring individualized homeopathy and yoga was observed. So we like to plan more uh, big uh, sample size and uh, we like to set up is a, a very important setup uh, that, is, uh, that is a consensus 
uh, from the uh, from different yoga therapist also this is the uh, uh, show uh, protocol and uh, this uh, trial has been already uh, registered in the ctri and we have presented this uh, study in the jantra 2020 that is uh, conducted by nimans another trial it is a very important trial we are trying to integrate yoga in homeopathy uh, in uh, maj bhattacharya homeopathy medical college which is uh, my previous work station so effectiveness of integrated homeopathy and yoga in management in stress it is open randomized pragmatic trial so it is double blind non randomized placebo controlled trial of individualized homeopathy in patients suffering from stress had to be stopped because the participants were extremely unfinished with placebo but methods are were adopted uh perspective open randomized three parallel arm pragmatic clinical trial with a three months duration and follow up for each patient this protocol has already been registered prospectively in the ctr and the study setting at mohej bhattacharya homeopathy medical college and hospital these are the selection of samples and inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria there are three arms arms one is the individualized homeopathy arms two is the uh, uh, yoga therapy that is uh, uh, brahmori pranayam and udhiji pranayam we have uh, introduced Body flow diagram, but this project is also running in Mohej Bhattacharya Homeopathy Medical College under the supervision of yoga therapist. This is another study that is the role of yoga management in the pre-diabetes, and pre-diabetes is very important nowadays. It is a grey area. uh for yoga and also homeopathy uh so we have uh, started this clinical trial in mohej patacharya homeopathy medical college as well as dn uh, homeopathy medical college due to some uh covid issues this uh study is uh, 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 this time is uh, altered due to some official constraint so role of yoga in the management of prediabetes and open, open observational clinical trial aims is to evaluate any significant change in the prediabetes after yoga intervention object to to evaluate the ro role of yoga in changing fasting blood glucose to hours or 75 gram glucose load plasma glucose and blood hb1c to estimate changes in the revised diabetic checklist and the study design is the open label prospective observation and non non control pre, pre and post comparison clinical trial and studies setting it is a vaish bhattacharya homeopathy medical college as well as dn homeopathy medical college select selection of sampling patient diagnosed with a pre diabetes and sample size keeping 10% drop out total 30 samples will be taken it's a very short sample size should be though and study duration total duration is a 12 months this is the inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria and this is the pre procedure uh intervention of yoga that is uh, a very important one and uh, these interventions specifically uh, uh conducted by the yoga uh, instructor of two homeopathy medical colleges utkata uh, ashan with bhadra ashan bhujanga ashan these sort of asanas and uh, mudras they are recommended outcome measures so this trial is also going on in mohej bhattacharya homeopathy medical college and we we like to we like to conduct it also in jain homeopathy medical college so uh, the conference we have conducted is an integrated approach of yoga in homeopathy in Ay ayurveda in 2020 which is called shoham and seminar on integrated approach of two wellness clinic of yoga which is called colloquium of yoga and research in 2020 with successful so what are the challenges challenges uh, is a lack of integration of research in homeopathy with yoga lack of tools from integration of homeopathy researches with yoga 
And yes, there are some lack of service in the field of homeopathic research adapted with yoga. And yes, there is some bibliometric research for quantitative analysis as integrated method and lack of interest and knowledge on plagiarism. What is the lacuna in the integrated approach in homeopathy with yoga? There is a poor number of publication in the field of homeopathy with yoga that is to be addressed. And lack of validation and questionnaire skill in the field of integrated research in homeopathy with yoga. That is to be addressed very sincerely. And uh, we have to conduct lack of uh, uh, disease-oriented research work in the integrated approach. Yes, that is a very important one is a double blind RCT, which is a, a very important but uh, to address double bind RCT in yoga is a very challenging issue. Uh, uh, how to conduct double bind RCT is a very, very, very crucial. And um, uh, that's why uh, we have to con conduct single blind uh, RCT in yoga. And uh, hence, it is, there, is, uh, there is a lack of systematic review and meta analysis in this field. Yes, fund. Fund, from, uh, uh, fund for research in the homeopathy as well as yoga is very important, but funding agencies are Ministry of Ayush. Sometimes they are funding for EMR project, uh, sometimes CCRH funded a lot, and Department of Science of Technology also is a funding agency, and Department of DBT is also funded uh, for uh, yoga and uh, homeopathy research. So uh, we need uh, uh, continued medical education in this regard. So less number of CME event in this field uh, uh, of integrative research, less number of workshop related to integrative research, less number of webinar related to this concept and symposium. So to enlighten a future project of the integration is the more fundamental research is are required in this field and the disease oriented approach of research is needed more RCT trial is needed, uh, whether it is single blind or double blind. And RCT or big sample size in multicentric is very essential and more more systematic reviews uh, and uh, meta-analysis are required. Thank you. Thank you, question Siri. Hello. Thank you, sir. May I please request the moderator, Professor Dr. Shatadal Das, sir, to please say a few words. Are we audible, Das, sir? Yes, sir. Over to you, please. May I uh, request uh, Professor Dr. Shatadal Dasar to please moderate the session. Thereafter, we will be taking the question answers from the participants. Okay, so thank you all. So Professor Shomwe goes is an excellent teacher as well as a scientist. We have published many papers together and share many scientific ideas. To place such a yoga, yoga and, and this and this homeopathy on the same platform may appear to be a different job. If you enter enter deeply, then then you may you may find that it is not so so typical. And and there are lots of similarity out there. So, so let us give one example. We have studied action of homeopathy medicine in different diseases, particularly in the molecular pathways, uh, particularly receptors and like, and like TLRs, cytokines, intracellular pathways, et cetera. We always observe that pro-inflammatory cytokine in the genes are almost always down-regulated and anti-inflammatory cytokine genes are up-regulated. And after, after you observe the published papers, in yoga, 
I find that in about 70% published papers of yoga, they observed the, the, the down regulation of CRP particularly, IL-6 particularly, and the, the TNF genes. So we find that there are lots of similarity. And thus, if, if yoga and, and the swamipati are joined together and integrated, then it would be it would be a boosting effect, and the mankind will be and the mankind will be to benefit. I, I, the professor goes highlighted uh, the mind body mechanism of yoga, extending to primary, secondary, and tertiary level. He described about the about the spirituality of the yoga. He he mentioned about uh, about the GABA, adrenal, serotonin and so on in, in, in relation to the yoga. But, uh, but there are many difficulties and challenges. He emphasized an integrated approach of yoga, of yoga and homeopathy, which in a, in a study, although, although not showed very good result as the, as, as the number of the, the number of participants are very low, but the further study is needed in that line. Similarly, in the integrated, integrated study is going on, on on stress and diabetes mellitus. Now, the, the, among the important challenges, and there is the lack of research and its validation. The particularly the knowledge regarding the double brain RCT, then interest in this integrated study uh, and it, uh, it, I, I, the lack of knowledge are, are the important aspects we should be to look for. Now the disease oriented the, the study, particularly RCT, is very, very important in, the, in, the, in this respect. So, so thank you, Professor Ghosh, for this excellent, excellent presentation, and the, the uh, all the attendants, all the persons attending this this particular seminar will be definitely benefited after this after the mind blowing uh, 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 the lecture given by Professor Ghosh. Thank you, Professor Ghosh. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar, my dear guys. Hello, Songita, may you allow him to say something, Songita? Yes, sir. Can you allow yes, me sir. to say something? Yes, uh, sir, please, sir. Please, sir, most welcome. Anytime, yes, sir. Sir. So, my, uh, thank you very much for your nice presentation. And uh, this is not presentation, but actually uh, your approach, a beautiful approach. You are integrating this yoga uh, and homeopathy. I don't know in, in India how many people are doing this type of work. I don't know. Maybe there are some people, but you are in Bengal, at least you are pioneering this, in this work. And uh, we are with you, Vishwabharati Department of Yogi Art and Science. Thank you, are, sir. Thank you, sir. If you need any, any type of support uh, about Yogi, you know, the, we have the good teachers, uh, I mean, the qualified teachers, uh, researchers also here with the, in our department, uh, they are the permanent staff, also the guest faculty is there. And our students is there, undergraduate, postgraduate, PhD student is there. If you need any help, any cooperation, I, we are with you. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thank you for your uh, motivation and your uh, help, which you have really uh, shown. Definitely, sir. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Ghosh, sir, there is a question. Uh, would you like to answer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bipla, I, yes, I, I, rather you listen to the, uh, Dr. Ganguly's lecture, you will get your answer. Okay, sir. I'm just reading it, sir. Uh, is is there, there any information uh, yeah, yeah, or yeah. link by which we can know that Hanuman sir respect Indian yoga and had received information from yogic philosophy? Yes, that is that is important because uh, uh, next session is uh, similarity uh, be, between uh, homeopathy and uh, philosophy of homeopathy and from philosophy of yoga. So listen, uh, the concept of uh, uh, yoga and homeopathy. Next session is Dr. Shubhashish Ganguly. He will answer in detail. Okay, sir. 
Really, uh, uh, thank uh, you, sir. sir. Principal is present. Yes, sir, definitely. So he is uh, attending the meeting uh, since long, sir. From okay, the okay. beginning, he is uh, attending the meeting, sir. Okay, sir. This webinar. This is our pleasure. Thank you, sir. Uh, really, uh, thank you, Shubhamoy, sir, for your talk, which will surely motivate the postgraduate students and practitioners of homeopathy to take a various study project with integration of yoga. We are also very thankful to the Department of Health and Family Welfare, Government of West Bengal, for the initiative of Ayush Wellness Center at the Teaching Homeopathic Institute, where we are utilizing yoga experts for better patient management system. Really, as uh, very well said by <clears throat> Dr. Shubhamai Ghosh sir and Professor Shatadal Das sir, we really need CME workshops to get ourselves acquainted with the research methodology and the integration process. Thank you, Shubhamai Ghosh sir, and uh, our respected Professor Shatadal Das sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so uh, with this, we will proceed to the last but the very important session of this webinar on integration of philosophy of yoga and homeopathy, a realistic approach in clinical practice to be presented by Professor Dr. Shubhashish Ganguly, sir. Professor Ganguly is working as head of the Department of Organon of Homeopathic uh, Medicine and Homeopathic uh, Philosophy. He is the visiting physician at DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital. He is also guiding PhD and postgraduate students under West Bengal University of Health Sciences. He has published various research papers in index journals all over the world and overall a true practitioner of homeopathy and spiritualism and the session is to be moderated by professor dr pradeep kumar bairi sir professor dr pradeep kumar bairi sir he is the head department of repertory and the pg coordinator at mahesh bhattacharya homeopathic medical college and hospital howrah a renowned academician Gold medalist in his BHMS course, pursued MD in repertory from National Institute of Homeopathy. He joined as medical officer, Department of Health and Family Welfare, Government of West Bengal, after securing first position in the PSC examination. With more than 17 years of teaching experience in the subject of repertory and an excellent prescriber, Professor Bairi uh, sir has been guiding many postgraduate students delivered lectures in various CMEs and government organization program all over India and has shared his expertise. Anguli, sir. Okay. May I audible? Yes, sir, you audible, please. Thank you, Dr. Shongita. At the outset, I want to give my heartiest thanks to our respected principal, sir, all the panelists, and all the audience. My topic is integration of philosophy of yoga and homeopathy a realistic approach in clinical practice. Now, what is yoga? We already know. Yoga is derived from the Sanskrit word, juj means to join or to unite. And the practice of yoga leads to the union of individual consciousness with that of the universal consciousness with a perfect harmony between the mind, body and soul. Homeopathy, what is homeopathy? We all know. Homeo means similar and pathos means suffering. That is similar suffering. It is a system of medicine by the administration of medicines which have the power to produce similar sufferings in the healthy human being. And it administers single medicine, similar medicine and with minimum dose. And there, is, there are various definitions or levels of understanding regarding yoga from primary stage and up to gradual upliftment to understand 
in different stages. And homeopathy as a method of treatment, a simple, natural, holistic system of medicine never destructs the immune system. Homeopathy, initially, we know a method of treatment, but ultimately, it is related to mode of living. Simple living and minimum requirements. Simple living and high thinking. Philosophical understanding of homeopathy. And there are many positive sides to study homeopathy and to practice homeopathy. Particularly if we study deeply. And then our change of attitude towards life is modified. As a system of medicine, we usually related, relates to health, disease, and treatment or cure or recovery. And what is health, we all know. Our master, Dr. Samuel Hanneman, has given the definitions of health in aphorism number 19 long before the World Health Organization was established. And he has given in aphorism number nine, it is a state where in the healthy state of the body, organism, all the vital functions are operated in harmonious way. And so that our indwelling reason gifted mind can freely employ this living healthy instrument for the higher purposes of our existence. This is very important. Higher purposes of our existence. So what is the purpose of existence? We have to think about that regarding disease and regarding treatment also. Now philosophy. The use of reason and argument in seeking truth and knowledge of reality, especially the causes and nature of things of the principles governing the existence. So philosophy is related to main points are reality, causes, nature of things and principles. When we study Kent, James Tyler Kent, he has said that there are two realms or worlds, the world of causes and the realm or world of ultimates. Physical world, which is related to sense organs. The world of causes is related to invisible world, not discoverable by the five senses. It is the world of thought and discoverable only by understanding. So homeopathic concept, here we can compare the concept of causes in homeopathy with the concept of various diseases in yoga also, particularly in case of therapeutic yoga. And Dr. Indranil Bhubhashurai has clearly said that the cause of a disease may be 20 or 30 years back, there are various levels of body. That is Annamoy, Kosh, Pranamoy, Monomoy, Vigyanamoy, Anandamoy, Kosh. And physical body, causal body, coarse body, finer body, finest body. And we have to know the causes, particularly the apparent causes, exciting causes, but the fundamental causes, the miasmatic causes, the in-depth causes, we have to know that to annihilate a disease condition. And the nature of the disease also, nature of the persons also, and the principles. Homeopathy is a system of medicine which is based on some principles, cardinal principles and various other principles. Now regarding homeopathic philosophy, 
concept of health in aphorism number 9 and other related rit- literature it is the holistic concept as a whole it is not the part or body or organ only becomes diseased but as a person whole is disease our vital principle our life principle our life energy is disturbed and so according to their inclination their susceptibility the organ is damaged and reason gift in mind in the definition of health our master has said long before that reason gift in mind so it is the logical mind and trinity of life so homeopathy is related to trinity of life mind body and the force vital force vital principle and vital force force as you know the product of energy but the energy is coordinated by principles kent has mentioned vital force it is the vice resident of the soul jo soul culture is basically the part of yoga yoga therapy or yoga science but homeopathy basically studies the vital force vital principle and vital energy and the physical body and regarding health not only the physical level but all the dimensions as mentioned in organon of medicine or homeopathic literature as well as in other world world health organizations definition of health, health also so clarity rationality and creativity these are the factors which are not only written in a, in our books written in our lead literature but we give emphasis during our case taking during our treatment of the patient regarding disease disease is also a concept dynamic concept suppose a patient is suffering from diabetic nephropathy what is the cause of it we usually say diabetes what is the cause of diabetes genetic why genetic why the why the some of the patients have got genetic impression genetic tendency why not others so if we want to understand the real causes we have to go back the manifestations how it affects only the material product material cause is sufficient dr imnalil basura has said clearly that our anxiety our tension our depression produces interleukin 6 and though so if viral virus covid virus covid 19 enters into our body then it is very easily possible to multiply so actual the cause lies in evil thinking disorders in mind as said by our master samuel hanuman in chronic disease it is the disorder in mind and reflection on physical body though it is not not said that only all the diseases come from mind to body but psychosomatic and somatosomatic they are interdependent if our body is deranged then our mind becomes sick sick there are so many symptoms of mind similarly if mind is disordered depression anxiety etc there may be reflection on physical level so holistic approach as a whole person as a whole it is taken into consideration in homeopathy and the individualistic approach like disease is a liquid state 
it takes the shape when it enters into a person. What are the basic? As we see, water when poured into a glass, into a cup, into a dish, it takes the shape of that pot. Similarly, disease when affects a person, it takes the shape of a person. So individuality in all levels of homeopathy, totality of symptoms, and totality of the symptoms, the characteristic features of the, what is the characteristic features of the patient? In, like in yoga, in yoga practice also, individual yoga practice in homeopathy also, individual disease and individual treatment procedures, treatment method. And prevention, regarding prevention, general prevention, supports of life, Animan has mentioned in 77 aphorism, which are necessary for the supports of life. Residence, proper residence, proper food, diet, exercise. Not only that, yoga helps us. What type of exercise are required for a particular person? Then, it is the field where yoga and homeopathy can be helpful to a person to achieve its highest levels of health or to free him from disease. Our master has also said, not only the treatment procedure or treatment during homeopathic treatment during disease condition, but he must be philosophical with religious attitude. Religious, religion, real religion has no scope of fanaticism. It leads a man open-minded. Expansion is life. Contraction is death. Religion teaches this. This type of religion your religious practice is advised by your master and to avoid over exhaustion of the body and mind. Over exhaustion of the body and mind. We know nowadays at present that what are the chemical mediators, chemical signals are generated due to over exhaustion of mind, body, stress, anxiety, depression, etc. So, physical and mental care not only the physical care, but also mental care. And yoga in this field help us along with homeopathic medicine to achieve the goal. Regarding treatment, our aim is to cure if possible. Palliation is needed if not possible. If the disease is incurable. Similarly, in, in case of yoga practice, an old age, hypertensive, diabetic, he or she may not be cured, but to give him relief, to lead a comparatively healthy life, productive life, creative life. So it is the service to the humanity homeopathy teaches us. Not only to earn money, but we have to remember it is the service to the humanity. So during case taking, it is an art and science. We have observed that patients are very frank to a homeopathic physician because they have sufficient time to listen the complaints, the sufferings of the patients pouring poor patients. And we have to acquire some special qualities for that, Honeyman has mentioned. In 83-98 aphorism and footnote of 104 aphorism of our organonom medicine, conscientious, vivek, 
not only professional but we have to to have conscientious so that patients come to us for their suffering they are very poor not only in money but in mind in physical body so we have to keep them give them relief for that medicine is administered we all know on the basis of semi monomini what is the purpose purpose is not to harm if not help we cannot help always the patients to give them relief or to cure them but our motto is not to harm them if not help the basic philosophy of homeopathy is similar attracts and we may correlate these phenomena suppose a unicellular organism attracts those constituents which are part and parcel of their cell a dog a cat has the tendency to take those foods which will help them to develop their constituents of the cell similarly in case of man this is the basic philosophy and mind body as an unit and as similar attracts similar we have the susceptibility to those things and as the susceptibility becomes more so small amount becomes sufficient so law of least action and treatment is also based on holistic medicine our master doctors christian fredrick samuel hanneman has tremendous sacrifice if he had not left his so called didde allopathic practice he would have earned a lot of money lot of dollars lot of income but he sacrificed because the dain allopathic system of medicine was more harmful than without treatment and our masters attitude towards allopathic physicians was praiseworthy he was against allopathic system of medicine the then allopathic system of medicine but not was the he was not the against of allopathic physician he said about them they are his brothers brethren and hanuman had a faith of god in every aspect he says said divine creator of the world whose human creatures he helps to preserve and whose approval renders him thrice blessed so it is very easy for homeopathic system of medicine to adopt yoga practice because yoga though it has various levels of understanding but ultimate levels of understanding is realization of god and in death bed when animans wife asked him that he had done so many for the suffering humanity but god has punished him in such a way he immediately replied with a feeble voice don't say this i am grateful to the almighty god so his faith in god is very much praiseworthy and he said in his last word as a last word i have not lived in vain ami bhritha janmo grohon kori nai it remembers sami vivekanandes words when bone make an impression jodi jonmecho ekta daag rekhe jay so there are so, so many close relations between yoga and homeopathy in its basic philosophy and philosophical similarity between yoga and homeopathy mind body spirit complex 
so there may be some levels of understanding may differ on prejudiced mind three form ceremony sanskar in bengali on prejudiced mind our prejudiced mind may block our achievement and patience in an eminent degree patience in an eminent degree if you want peace be calm jodi shanti chao shanto hao peaceful mind and rational reason gifted mind can be correlated with ganjo ganjo that is logic reason neti neti it is said in literature and all wise preserver of health his devotion towards god towards almighty it can be correlated with bhakti yoga and to avoid indolence love of ease obstinacy but to nurture untiring zeal effective service that is karma yoga so to a homeopath if we study homeopathic literature including hanuman we will find find that all the various stages of yoga almost are incorporated in this system of medicine now i want to conclude my lecture by shami vivekananda quoting on homeopathy the homeopath comes and gives his medicines and cures parasites more than the allopath does because the homeopath does not disturb the patients but allows the nature to deal with them so there is no conflict between yoga and homeopathic basic philosophy if we practice homeopathy along with yoga not only the patients will improve but our attitude our mental and physical development will reach a higher purpose of our existence thank you all for your patience sharing sadhu 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 thank you sir may i now request our uh, moderator respected moderator for this session professor dr pradeep kumar bairi sir to please moderate the session by professor dr shubhashish ganguly sir head department of organ and of medicine and homeopathic philosophy over to you bairi sir Sir, would you please unmute yourself? Sir, you are not audible. Would you please unmute yourself? Thank you, sir. Sir, you are not audible, sir. Please unmute yourself. Now, am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible, please. Oh. Okay. thank you sir thank you dr shongita saha and the end homeopathic medical college and hospital for being me the giving me the opportunity to take part in this two day seminar related to yoga and the homeopathy and other integrated with the other medical science uh, i feel happy that since evening today i learned a lot of things related to the research work in yoga and also uh, i specially mention about dr subhomoy ghosh what he mentioned about the yoga and the individualized homeopathic medicine and perhaps dr shubhashish ganguly retained the same motto that is the yoga and how to apply the homeopathic individualized medicine so being a research worker 
one should have the sufficient knowledge and sufficient ability to prescribe the right homeopathic medicine in order to achieve the goal first of all thanks to dr subhash ganguly for his very nice presentation related to the philosophy of yoga and philosophy of homeopathy in the, in the very beginning he mentioned one thing that is the change of life of the practitioner of homeopathy that is the very interesting thing that the homeopathic practitioner being the practicing homeopathy with the help of the practice of homeopathy they can change themselves how they change themselves because they are in the way of their fixed principle they are in the way of their fixed a fixed idea of the homeopathic philosophy that is the law of familia secondly he is also very nicely mentioned about the higher purpose of our existence and before going to uh, giving in details about this uh, higher purpose of existence may I like to quote from patanjal yoga what is already quoted by dr subhamay ghosh that is the yogascha chitta vitti nirodho that means that chitta and the vitti if it is nirodho but mind that that yoga can able to nirodh the chitta and the vitti but only this is not by the way of the suppression or oppression but this is by the way of the practice so yoga must have the two ways that is one its beneficial effect is as a part of the exercise and another as a part of the spiritual exercise which be, which make him more more jivatma is assimilated with the paramatma in this respect one thing is very interesting related to yoga that is yoga karmeshu kaushalam one thing is that there this yoga karmeshu kaushalam and in this respect dr uh, swami pitambarananda very nicely uh, quote one word that is the tat prapti yoga tat prapti upaya but how to achieve the chitta vitti nira that is the tat prapti yoga upaya for this reason that is means the method of achieve method of perceive of one's own self and in this respect dr ganguly very nicely said that homeopathy through his law of similia that is the similia similia current book that means the therapeutic methods of treat the person in the disease state according to the therapeutic law of nature so we the homeopath using the law of nature and applying the law of nature with the help of the of a medicine that can produce the similar effect and the yogic gurus and the yoga instructor first of all the yogi gurus and yoga instruct, instructor the yoga instructor they developed our physical ability or that is the exercise part but the yogi gurus they are trying to develop both our the spiritual dimension as well as our physical dimension if one can achieve the spiritual dimension that is the mukto mukto that is the uh, that is the directly assimilated to the divine creator very very nicely dr ganguly said that in the very preface to the first edition of organ or medicine he also mentioned that one thing that a yoga practitioner may be depending upon first of all depending upon his ability he may go through the karma yoga or the bhakti yoga or raj yoga or gyan yoga each and every path of yoga may reach the individual to that highest destiny but it depends upon the sadhak's its ability to receive what is essential or what is applicable to him that is one thing again adhikari vishaya sampark and prayojana that means who that is the who is adhikari vishaya what what he wants to achieve sampark how how he will achieve the goal and finally prayojan for what for he is doing this so the yoga philosophy is also attaining the highest level of our destiny and the homeopathic practice also 
teaches us to reach the highest first purpose of our existence that is the you will, i will we will be directly assimilated to the divine creator very nicely very nicely mentioned by dr gang again one thing if we go through the yogic practice that if one try to practice yoga then he will attain the health and also at the same time he will be free from the i consciousness that i consciousness means that here i am mentioning about that terminology i consciousness what the i consciousness that means that the one can able to benefited by health and also various types of the vibhutis but it is not the goal for the yogic gurus and the yogic uh, sadhakas to re- receive the health and to receive the various vibhutis but it is also essential to know the stages how far he is reaching but finally at the same time the homeopathic practitioner they are also practice homeopathy not for his patient but for for himself also that is at the same time the medicine can able to do the higher purpose of the existence of his patient and by practicing this the physician can also reach the higher purpose of his existence that is we are not doing for ourselves for myself for my self consciousness for me but we are doing for the microcosm to the macrocosm that will be directly assimilated to the divine creator that is our goal so very very interesting session i hope that uh, if we go through the details about this that related to the yoga and uh, homeopathy in yoga what we uh, see that the perfectionist one has to perform the abhyas and the vairagya but at, at the same time what will be a homeopath very nicely dr hanniman says that you should divide avoid love of his obstinacy and indolence and you should have the unprejudiced observer and the untiring jil dr ganguly also mentioned this so constant observation of nature of an individual nature and prakriti the disease process the curative principle and non attachment to any of this can make a practitioner wise and that is the our goal to as taught by dr hanniman through his various writings and and one thing is that both the science that is the yoga i am mentioning both the science i am not mentioning both the philosophy i mentioned that the both the science bears the wisdom of ancient traditional knowledge and propensity for subjective changes to evolve in a state of divineness along with a spontaneous desire for benevolence of all earthly creatures thank you again dr ganguly but before uh, before concluding uh, doctor related to doctor gangul is i like to mention one thing one of our uh, participant namely doctor uh, bijoy bimol uh, bormon or doctor bijoy bormon i, I don't know able to uh, mention the name uh, remember the name as doctor uh, doctor shubhamoy goes uh, told that he will be answered from uh, the le- next uh, lecture so i like to answer uh, his question that Dr. Hanneman, in his various writings, mentioned about uh, Indian, uh, especially the Gangetic West Bengal and also various diseases. He also various uh, famously mentioned the cholera in the Gangetic West Bengal. But uh, so far, my knowledge concerned, uh, there is no such uh, link where Dr. Hanneman mentioned about the Indian yogis. Uh, but if it is, uh, I can able to find any link. uh surely i will uh, convey the link and the source of the link to dr uh, bimon barbo again thank you to dr ganguly thanks to dr imonil basurai actually today's session i also joined on yesterday's session but today's session that is the scientific basis 
and the changes has occurred in our human uh, body by the yogic practice what dr indoneel basurai uh, mentioned in the various neurotransmitter and also various uh, levels and followed by the how the homeopath can uh, use yoga and the homey individual homeopathic medicine uh, in the research purposes and finally dr ganguly uh, give us the light yes yoga and the individual is homeopathic medicine can do betterment for the human being and the for the development of the uh, and the for the betterment of the uh, make the free of the disease of the suffering humanity but yes the primary thing is that yogic practice must be in the right way and at the same time the homeopathic individual medicine must be choosed in the right homeopathic way otherwise we will not be achieve the desired goal thank you all by giving me the opportunity thanks to dr samon mukherji as i was also a uh, previously attached with this uh, institute uh, so uh, i have uh, uh, due re- i have respect to my previous college dn the homeopathic medical college and hospital thanks dr samon mukherji dr songita uh, uh, shah and the present faculty member of this institute for being giving me the opportunity uh, to participate again thank you all Thank you, sir. Hello, Songita. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Please, please, sir. Yes, sir. You are most welcome. You are most welcome, sir. Please. This is for Dr. Suhasis Ganguly lecture. Ta sonar pore. Really, we were we are over then to just get your input, sir. No, I mean I mean Bangladeshi. I mean, sir, lecture ta sonar pore. Yes, sir. 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 Yes, স্যার আপনার ঘটনাটা সময় শোনার পরে আমার 30 বছর আগেকার একটা ঘটনা মনে পড়ছে তখন গোলপার্কে একটা যোগের ইনস্টিটিউট ছিল সেখানে আমি যোগের বিভিন্ন রকমের তখন শেখানো টেখানো হতো শিখতে মানে গেছিলাম কিছু খবরের জন্য যে কি কি শেখানো হচ্ছে ইত্যাদি সেখানে গিয়ে দেখি একজন হোমিওপ্যাথি ডাক্তার বসে আছেন আমি পরিচয় করলাম যে আপনি কেন এসছেন তো উনি বলছেন যে বললেন টললেন তা আমি জিজ্ঞেস করতে উনি বললাম আমি হোমিওপ্যাথি প্র্যাকটিশনার না বললাম আপনি হোমিওপ্যাথি প্র্যাকটিশনার আপনি যোগ শিখে কি করবেন তো বলছেন না আমি একটা জিনিস উপলব্ধি করেছি আমি নিজে যোগ করি আমি দেখেছি যখন হোমিওপ্যাথি ওষুধের সঙ্গে যোগ আমি দিচ্ছি তখন দেখছি যে তারা খুব বিশ্বাস করছেন আর কি এবং খুব ভালোভাবে নিচ্ছেন তো আপনার লেকচারের পরে আমার সেই কথাটা মনে পড়ছে দ্বিতীয় ঘটনাটা আমি বছর দশেক আগে পন্ডিচেরি মেডিকেল কলেজে যেটা এমস এর আছে সেখানটাতে একটা লেকচার দিতে গেছিলাম সেখানে গিয়ে ওখানটা যে ফিজিওথেরাপি ফিজিক্যাল মেডিসিন ইউনিট সেখানে যাই তাদের ওখানে একটা ওই এক্সারসাইজের সেন্টার আছে সেখানটা খোঁজ খবর নিচ্ছিলাম কতজন আসে আপনাদের কাছে প্র্যাকটিস ট্যাকটিস করতে ওরাও একই কথা বলছিলেন যে আমরা যখন এক্সারসাইজ শুধু দিচ্ছি তখন কিন্তু লোক এত নিচ্ছে না এক্সারসাইজের সঙ্গে যখন একটু যোগ টোগ মিশিয়ে দিচ্ছি তখন প্রচুর লোক সেটা নিচ্ছে তা আপনাদের এই যে ইন্টিগ্রেটেড অ্যাপ্রোচ এটা দেখে মনে হচ্ছে যে এটা ঠিক রাইট ডাইরেকশন পেতে চলেছে আজ থেকে তিরিশ বছর আগের আমার ওই গোলপার্কের অভিজ্ঞতা তখনকার এক দুজন ভয়পথী প্র্যাকটিশনার যেটা ভাবতেন আজকে যেহেতু এত বড় প্ল্যাটফর্মে এটাকে নিয়ে এসছেন এবং আপনার যে ফিলোজফিক্যাল টক তাতে ভালোভাবে বুঝতে পারলাম যে যোগের সঙ্গে হোমিওপ্যাথির কোনো রকম বিরোধ নেই কোনো এতটাই সাজুস্য আছে এতটাই সাদৃশ্য আছে এতটাই সম্পৃক্ত যে আগামী দিনটা অনেক বেশি সমৃদ্ধ হবে স্যার অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ স্যার অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ সকলকে থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার থ্যাংক ইউ থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার থ্যাংক ইউ স্যার থ্যাঙ্কস আ লট টু ডক্টর প্রফেসর ডক্টর সুভাষিস গাঙ্গুলি স্যার এন্ড ডক্টর uh so i think some mic is uh, the hello thanks a lot to professor dr subhashish ganguly sir and professor dr bairi sir for such a wonderful session and moderation uh regarding integration of homeopathic philosophy hanimanian concept and aphorism of organon of medicine with yoga and homeopathic practice really as per the words of dr ganguly we need to have patience for peaceful mind and practice of homeopathy with this i would like to request our driving force motivator guide for this webinar our respected principal administrator professor dr shamul kumar mukherjee sir to please say a few words over to principal sir 
Yes, you, yes. Over to audible. you, please. Show me yes, the audible. Yes, audible, please. Yes. Yes, are you audible? Good evening, everybody. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the respected guests, speakers, Swami Atto Priyananda Maharaj Ji, Dr. Hemant Bhargav Ji, Dr. Indranil Bosu Rai, for sharing their wisdom in our enlightenment. I extend my sincere thanks to my fraternity professor, Dr. Subhashish Ganguly, head of the Department of Organo Medicine and Philosophy, and Professor Dr. Subhamai Ghosh, head of the Department of Pathology, for their tireless toll for enhancing the learning of our science, even in the virtual mode. I am utmost indebted to the esteemed moderators, Yoga Chajjo Dr. Chanchal Roy, Dr. Aurobindo Bhargav Brahma, respected professors of the professor, Guru of the Guru, Dr. Satodal Das, Professor Dr. Sumiran Mondal, and also my friend, Professor Dr. Pradeep Bairi, HOD, Department of Repertory, Mohesh Bachchaj Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, for their priceless observations that have enriched the program. I am at most obliged to Dr. Professor Subhash Singh, Director National Institute of Homeopathy, the chief guest of the program, as he has incorporated the positive vibes at the inauguration. <clears throat> at the end, I would like to extend my sincere appreciation for the untiring efforts of the PG coordinator, Professor Dr. Songita Saha, Department of Organ of Medicine, and the entire team of DNA PG Welfare Committee, which is a part of the DNA family, to have achieved such success within a very, very short notice. My special word of thanks to Dr. Shuman Haldar for his sound technology and smiling attitudes as he is always ready to end. Before my conclusion, our vision and mission today is for this type of webinar seminar, today's our respected speaker says, and discuss Dr. Indronil Boshurai. We must try and try to drive our life chronological age to biological age. Finally, I would like to thank God Almighty as He guides us through these difficult times, pandemic on the pandemic situation and prayer for well-being of all. Thanks to all. Good night, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your words of encouragement, sir. May I now request Dr. Ashok Pandit, the third year postgraduate trainee and president of PG Welfare Committee, DND Homeopathic Medical College, to convey the vote of thanks to the August gathering. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, sir. A very good evening to our most respected and honorable Professor Dr. Syamal Kumar Mukherjee, sir, Principal and Administrator of DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, our most esteemed speakers, respected moderators, respected faculty members, and our delegates of this webinar, integration of yoga with different disciplines of medical science from 25th June 2020.
2021 to 26th June 2021 organized by DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital in association with DND PG Welfare Committee. It is my privilege and honor to have received this opportunity to de deliver the vote of thanks in presence of such an august gathering and delegates on this web platform. We have come to the end of two days of webinar, which I believe that this webinar was really informative and learning experience to all of us. I, Dr. Ashok Pandit, PGT and President of PG Welfare Committee on behalf of DNA Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, PG Welfare Committee convey my deep sense of appreciation to our esteemed speaker, Dr. Hemant Bhargav sir, Assistant Professor of National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences, Bangalore, to Swami Atma Priyodanda Ji Maharaj, Vice Chancellor of Ram Krishna Mission, Vivekananda Edu Educational and Research Institute, Belur Math, West Bengal, to Professor Dr. Sumay Ghosar, HOD and Professor Department of Pathology of DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, Kolkata, to Dr. Indranil Basu Rai, sir, for Founder Chairman of American Association of Yoga and Meditation, to Professor Dr. Subhasis Ganguly, sir, Professor and HOD Department of Organ and of Medicine and PG Convener, DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, for their valuable informative and interactive session. We are truly inspired and motivated by your deliberation. I would like to pay my gratitude to each and every member of this organizing committee for this webinar, especially our beloved and most dynamic sir, Professor Dr. Syamal Kumar Mukherjee, Principal and Administrator of DNA Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital for the constant interview and enthusiasm perfect logistic us to do this webinar successfully by leading from the front. I would like to thank the respected moderators, Dr. Aurobindo Brahma sir, consultant psychiatrist of Kolkata Police Hospital and Bharat Sevasram Sangha Hospital, Kolkata, to Yogacharya Dr. Chanchal Roy sir, founder teacher of Hari Harananda Priya Yog Dhyan Kendra, Kolkata, to Professor Dr. Satyadal Das sir, best professor of Department of Pathology of DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, Kolkata, Professor Dr. Samiran Mandal sir, HOD Yogic Art and Science of Vishu Bharti University, Santi Niketan, and Professor Dr. Pradeep Kumar Bai sir, Professor and HOD Department of Repertory and PG Coordinator of Mahesh Bhattacharya Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital for their valuable inputs. My sincere and deepest thanks goes to our respected Dr. Sangeeta Saha Ma'am, Professor Department of Organ and of Medicine and PG Coordinator of DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital. And all our faculty members, HMO and RMO of DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital for their cooperation, participation, and constant support. My sincere gratitude goes to our technical committee members, especially respected Dr. Suman Haldar, sir, MD Homeopathy, Dr. Somi Bhattacharya, sir, Assistant Professor, Department of DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital, and Dr. Chandan Tudu, PGT second year of DND Homeopathic Medical College and Hospital. I am very glad and thankful to all our delegates from all over the India for their valuable online presence and participation, which is highly appreciated for making this webinar a grand success. The success of this program motivates us to do similar programs in the near future. We promise to bring to you many more such interactive and informative webinars on valuable topics in the near future. With this, we have come to the end of today's webinar. Hope to see you soon. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Ashok Pondit. Thanks a lot to the respected speakers, respected moderators, faculty members, medical officers of DND Homeopathic Medical College, last but not the least, technical team, and the participants. 
with a hope to meet you again very soon with such kind of webinar we will end this session thanks a lot and good night